Welcome to episode 90 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, Education. If you're new to the show, liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jay Rarbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for Season 3 of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view education. We also dive into Florida Senate Bill 148 titled Individual Freedom. Supporters of this bill think of it as pushing back against CRT in schools, that is, critical race theory, while opponents see it as absolving white people from discussing sensitive topics. We do go a bit long in this episode, but I believe that once you're done, you'll better understand libertarians on the topic of education and why this bill isn't what it seems. With that, let's dive right in. And then you jump into it, it's kind of noticeable. Gotcha. And I know because I mess it up all That's awesome because we are now recording. Oh, so here we go. back again, Tub is with me. We are doing 25 issues, uh, to libertarians on 25 issues. And this issue today is education. So hopefully you walk away feeling smarter, not in the public school sense, but actual smarter than when you started listening. So let's get in. Remember, we are walking through the book, uh, The Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. And in there, he's got a chapter where he just simply picks out 25 popular issues and he gives like a quick paragraph. Speaking of that paragraph, let's take a look at what he says when it comes to education. So here it is. He says government schools are monopolies that cost double what private schools cost, often teach viewpoints that many parents don't like, and generally provide an inferior education. Libertarians want the government to get out of the education business. Some libertarians suggest that we start with tax credits and or vouchers for private schools, but the ideal is total separation of school and state. So what do you got, Tub? Okay, so let's attack that in the way that he brings it up in that sense. Okay, do we and, need to put it and, back on screen? No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Well, unless they want to, it's, it's your show. So here's what happens. I'm not seeing any it's, comments from people so saying that they want it go. on screen, right, so we're, we're good. Keep it the way it is. All right, so for some reason, they tend to think that throwing more money at it fixes it. And that right. tends to always be the thing. Well, we've got to spend right. more money on education, more money on right. education. And people suck that in and they fall for it. Yes. Even though many times it doesn't always go to where it should be. And, and I kind of realized a, a bad, yes, <laughs> a bad teacher is a bad teacher. Right. Like, like you can no, give them I as agree. much money as you want. But a I bad, feel like you looked at my notes before maybe, maybe I did. and you were like, that's what I'm going to start on. Because I, I think I had, look, see right there. Bad teachers are still bad teachers. Right. So let's um, talk about that. Okay. One of the, the I'm going to get myself, I always get myself in trouble when I talk to teachers, public school teachers. Um, okay. Always, always, always. Because they always get really mad at me. And I'm not really mean to them, right? Not really but mean to them? Like, like, like not intentionally like mean to them? Or I, or I don't cut their tires? I'm not like, like, what are you saying? I'm not like oh, you terrible person. You do this bad thing. Okay. All right. Like, I'm not like very accusatory, but I am critical. Okay. And one of my biggest beefs, uh, and, and it happened ever since I watched Hillary Swank, take some kids from like the bad part of Los Angeles and, you know, help them, you know, move on with their lives and get out of drugs and gangs. Okay. You know, when I saw that movie, I was like, that's legit. But serious. And, and, and I know I'm kind of making a bit of a joke there, but I'm actually being quite serious. Okay. Because too many teachers, when students do well, they love the, Hey, thank a teacher. If you can read, thank a teacher. Right. Always, always, always. But the moment a student can't read, they can't do Who's their math. Who's fault is it then? All of a sudden, they're like, "Well, it's the administrators, it's the parents, it's the student, it's the students, it's the curriculum. You know, it's the curriculum, mm -hmm. it's the squeaky chairs. It's like everything but them." And I'm like, "Look, if you want the glory, 
for when things go right. You need to take a little bit of a beating when things go wrong. That's how it works. Do you know? Okay, so I taught for six six years. Okay. Okay. You're in gonna, a private. You're correct me on everything. Yeah. I'm telling you this. No, no. In a private school, in a private Christian school, and we actually it was it was a new school. Right. So they were kind of like they left another school and they kind of got started. Um, and so there was one student that they had there that he was a senior, mm -hmm. couldn't read. Right. Like he's a senior in high school about to graduate. Right. He couldn't read. And so, so they. Oh, pause yeah. that story. Uh huh. Did you notice something here? I was it, not surprised. Oh, oh, I was like, yeah. So, like, isn't that sad? I, I, I That's what you're sad. Saying, like but, nobody's like, really? What? He can't by by graduation. Did, like. People are that, surprised people don't, Exactly. But that's the problem. What does that say? And, and, and so, <clears throat> so he couldn't do this. And they're pulling him out. They're trying to walk him through kids' books. Right. You know, so he could graduate. Right. They weren't worried about whether he could really read or not. They just need to make sure he could yeah. graduate. Right. Um, and, and this is not a new problem. Because no. back when I was in high school, we had this one kid, unbelievable football player. Unbelievable. Right. Okay. Um, he couldn't go to college because he truly couldn't read. Right. And I remember he actually went to the word got out that he went to get a job where my dad worked actually. Right. And so the word got out that he didn't, he couldn't even sign his application right. into the job. He had to kind of exit and be like this. And that's what it turned into. And then you start realizing, well, wait a minute, how does this happen? How do you go through 12 years of school and you don't get the basic part of right. it? Now I could now listen, I understand a slow learner. Sure. I understand a slow reader. Right. Okay. But no, we're talking nothing here. Right. And, and so then I started saying, well, whose fault is that? Like right. what, what, like you said, they'll take the credit when things are going well, but when things are going bad, do, do they ever go back to those teachers and go, wait a minute, how did you let him go through 11 years before right. anybody ever went, this dude yeah. can't read? Yeah. And, and so I, 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 I look at that and I go, mm -hmm. okay. And now bear in mind, that's a private school. Now I, I do have preference. Mm -hmm. I, I have learned to appreciate the homeschooling. Right. Um, now, like when I was growing up, if you were homeschooled, you were part of those weird families, right. those weird church families and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so and people are all like, they're not going to be socialized right. Okay, but they, it, which they, is kind of ignorant of. But what, people still say that. People still say that. Right. And, and it's, it's, it's very ignorant because my mom did homeschooling with my my brother and my sister. Okay. And are they a lot smarter than you? Uh, I mean, I was <laughs> born. I got all the good whatever genes, got, I guess. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, they got leftovers. No, okay. I was kidding. No, they're they're great. And. Um, but they were homeschooled, and mm -hmm. she joined a homeschool association. There it is, yep. And I was actually already graduated at one point, right? I was going to school. Like, I already graduated high school. Oh, okay. Because we're, we're, I'm six years older than my sister. Right. And then six years older than my brother. Okay. I'm sorry, 12 six years old. Well, yeah. Yeah, six more. And so so you can see I got the public uh, yeah. school education. Yeah. Well, so, that's why she did homeschooling right. with them. Right. She's, she's like, like, all right, like, read up on this one. I got two more I can fix. He's, he thinks they're both right. six. So, um, so, so I... You're gonna make don't make fun of me, okay? I'm gonna tell you. I cannot but, promise don't make, don't this. But I got into this phase where I wanted to listen to like punk and ska music. How do you and, know what that is? And it's kind of like this. Uh, it's, it's like a punk rock, but okay. it's like a lot of things. Horns? Yeah, like you know. Yeah. You know, so that I might have like saxophone and I have trumpet, trombone. Oh, you're yeah. saying you're listening to stuff all the cool kids are listening. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, so. Uh -huh. And so I said, you know what? I want to be in a ska band too. So I was like, I need to learn how to play a musical instrument. So I wanted to play the trombone. I don't know what made me want to pick the trombone, but I had nowhere to go. My mom was like, well, there's classes that you can take at the homeschool association. Oh, okay. So, and it was like $5 or something. I don't know. It was really mm -hmm. cheap, like $5 a lesson or something crazy. And it was like a legit lesson. Like you had somebody that knew music and they would right. teach you music, um, how to read music. And they would start you out, you know, like here's Mary had a little lamb, blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know. On the trombone. And, but the weird part about it for me, at least, was um, all the kids were like in middle school. Except for me. <laughs> You're grown. So, You'd be like with a beard and, right. and driving so, yourself there. Like I can leave to go to work. It was in the morning and I was getting off of work because I worked third <laughs> shift. So I'd come in. I'm wearing like my my dirty jeans and a t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like looking down at the kids. I'm like, hey, how's it going? You okay. know, like trying to just Creep. be, trying to be nice. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, and then, then we did this actual. The school get shut down right after that. Right. <laughs> that guy was no longer allowed to do those uh, Did you ever see the movie Jesus Camp? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, so then then they actually did, you know, what every kid goes through when they're in a class. They're like, all right, so we're going to be putting on this like musical whatever thing, mm -hmm. you know, and I was part of it, which was even more weird because there I'm like twice. The, I'm actually twice the size. Well, how somebody. small were these I kids? I know, right? Like... <laughs> it was crazy, right? Like these are like, these are like little kids. And so there I am like, you know, all my peers. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 so it was kind of funny. 
But there were a lot of kids there, and there were a lot of families. Okay. And so you at the actually, recital? No, all together. Just okay. In, in the homeschool association. Okay. It was, oh, a, yeah. it was a big association because it covered like I want to say it covered multiple counties, like you know adjacent counties. Okay. And so like parents would come out, and they, and they didn't go out necessarily every day. I don't I don't remember the exact details, but like parents would be at home, and then they would get support. They could call and stuff. Right. And then there would be like certain events that would happen. You know, maybe you. Maybe there were some sports events. Maybe your kid was learning, you know, the trombone with some adult. Right. Maybe there was, you know, whatever, you know, all these different things that were going on. And so it's kind of weird to me when people are like, oh, they're not going to get socialized, you know, socialization. I'm like, maybe if they're in the mountains of Appalachia, but you know, by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. You know what? Can but many places. And this was like a rural community. Let, let me counter that argument now that I think we never think about. Because that's still an, that's still an argument that people use. Right. That they're going to have bad social skills. Oh, there's plenty that are right, right here. Oh, that's not what I was thinking. No, no, but think think of normal kids who go to school right. and they do these things, and then they come home and they get on their gaming system, they get on their phone, right. they get on their tablets. Right. What? what good Lord, nobody say anything about that. Nobody saying, right. hey, they're not learning how to socialize. They're learning right. how to go from this institution right. of a you know minimum security prison into home to just right. stare at this, and right. and nobody's questioning that. So yeah, they, no. so so well, not only that, I've been, I've you, you've been to public school, right? Did you I go to, in like I a, went to public school? Did you go in a major city? No, 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 I wouldn't call it. Uh, it's more to, of the city of where we live, but I, I wouldn't call it a major city. Public school in Dayton, Ohio. Okay. And one of my neighbor friends, she was a little, about two years older than me, maybe one year older than me or something like that. So she got to high school first. Right. And she told me, she's, you know, like, like after that, you know, when I was getting ready to graduate from middle school to go into high school, mm -hmm. and be, you know, a ninth grader, she told me, she said, look, I, I'm going to tell you right now, when kids get in fights there, it's different than where you are. She said, when they get in fights, the ambulance usually gets called. And I was like, oh. Okay. Like, I, like uh -huh. it was serious business. Yep. And I, I went through metal detectors. I okay. went through metal detectors. Let's see, I graduated in 97. Okay. So four years prior to that, about 93, mm -hmm. um, 92. I actually ended up doing an additional year of high school. But it's so about 92, 93. I was my junior, uh, I'm sorry, my um, uh, my. Freshman year, yeah, in in high school in Dayton, Ohio, and that's when I had to go through metal detectors just to get into the building. Okay, and they did that because the, you would see stories every now and then of kids that like you know somebody got stabbed, you know somebody got jumped, or you know whatever. Like we had the jumping and stuff like that. Right. We had assault. security guard always yeah. at the school. There was stuff a like that. we had a security guard there, yep. you know, and lo and behold, I, there were some fights where um, the ambulance was called. You okay. Know? Because, you know, they got in a fight outside and somebody's head hit the ground or something. Oh, you know, you know we, yeah, we'd have you stuff know. like that on occasion. It wasn't like a regular thing. Because like I said, we were the city <clears throat> of the area around right. us. We were the city part. But as a whole, right. you so, know what I mean? So when they talk about like, your kid's not going to be socialized. And I'm like, well, if socialization means we're going to have group fights. And going, to a, going to a school where you might get the Jumped hell beat stabbed. out of you, exactly. you know, like, stabbed. I mean, think, think we're about it. Without that. Yeah, like nobody's ever been like, man, them homeschool kids, man, you got to watch out because they'd be packing, they grab their switchblade and they stick you and, you know, like nobody hears stories I, about I, that. I, I, Why? I have, there's because a- Because they're getting socialized at least not to be psycho killers. There's, there, there's a meme that I tend to hold on to. I probably slap it on my phone and it says, homeschool kids be like- Right. It has a painting on the wall, spray paint. It says curse words. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. like that's how homeschool kids yeah. are. So you're like, right. If that's the difference, that's not right. necessarily bad. So here's the thing. Inside the book, he mentions about how some libertarians will go about vouchers. And he, right. And he goes a step further and says, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have those at all? Right. I, I, I'm the guy who goes along with, let's start with vouchers. I think that's a, I, I love the concept of the money following the child. Right. Okay. As opposed right. to what we have now, which I'm going to explain, we get it, but sometimes people don't understand that the reason why kids are forced to go to this school, everybody thinks it's because it's local. No, no, right. no. That's because they're telling you we're sending money to that school, send your kid there, regardless of how bad that school might be. Right. That's where you're stuck at. Right. So now I like the idea of some competition through those schools. Right. And, and now they start saying, okay, well, wait a minute, we got to raise our standards if we want these kids to come to right. our school because that's where the, because if we don't get these kids in our school, we don't get funding. Right. Which now brings up the standards for right. teachers and, and for the overall right. thing that maybe you start getting some of these F schools shut down. Because right. they're not serving a purpose F anymore. That, exactly. Like like that. So inside of that, I think they're just doing it to themselves. So I, I, I like this idea of 
this I think vouchers is the start. Right. I think it's the start of moving these. But I also like the idea that says, okay, wait a minute. What if we choose to homeschool? Right. Okay. Good. You know what? Yeah. Let's take some of that money. Let's hand it off to the ones right. who are homeschooling. Yeah. That you, you know what? So then now, guess what? Now that because maybe the maybe now they're can, still paying taxes. Yes, they are. And so if they can get some of that back, recoup some of that, maybe now you're paying a parent to stay home. Right. And teach their kids properly. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times, you know, a lot of parents, they don't homeschool, not because they don't want to. They'll tell right. you, I hate my kid's school or, or I can't afford, you know, right. private school. Right. So, but they do it because they have to work. Right. You know what I'm saying? They don't have the luxury of being able yeah. to stay home and stay with a child to teach them. Yep. So if you go back to, and, and, and you know what's funny? It's been probably over a month now. I was on my way here. I was listening to the radio. And uh, they were talking about it. And a guy on there who was talking about how schools were before government and unions got involved. Right. Okay. And, he, and like, I, I'll try to remember saying maybe when you post this, I'll find the name. By then, I'll throw it up on, in there in the comments. Okay. And um, But what he was explaining was how it truly looked like, and we think this is like Little House on the Prairie type stuff. And you know what that is, right? Yeah. All right, just check it. Yeah. So, um, so we think all the little like, wooden desks and the teacher yeah. would come over and smack, smack them with a ruler. But the, the idea is they had one schoolhouse for a community. Yep. Okay. And what they basically did, the community would pay. That's when they for had school teacher. marms. School what? Marms. Marms. Yeah, they call them school marms. What's a marm? That's just the old fashioned term for for the teacher or yeah. for the school. A yeah. Marm, a yeah. School it was marm? usually a woman, but yeah. School so it's like mom, but marm. I'm not really sure what marm is supposed you to be for, but I just know the word. But you don't. I don't know. It's you history. Throw stuff out there, and you don't. Worry I mean, about what do you think? I'm a linguistics press something. I mean, you I brought it up. I didn't just. What's it like? Right, are, you brought it up. Now, you, now you know what you're adding to the comments. Right, comments. Right, here's right. what a marm is. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> write it down. So here's what happens: is they had this schoolhouse that the community came together and paid the teacher. Right. Like they chose the teacher. They said, "This is the one that right. we want." They basically, you know, interviewed them. Said, right. "Here we go." They send their kids there, and they could probably do two or three different teachers. However, right. they were doing it. But then that community was choosing on their own to say, right. this is who we want. This is the type of direction we want them to go in. Right. And, and I think that what's happening is parents have gotten uninvolved with the school. Mm -hmm. So there are failing, horrible schools. And I think part of it is because nobody's holding them accountable. Right. Not even parents. Now, the critical race theory started coming through. And right. Some parents are getting all yep. worked up. We'll address that in a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, yeah. and so they, they started getting everybody worked up. We're like, oh, look what they're doing. But look what they've been doing all of this time. And right. nobody's paid a lick of attention. Actually, to I would say, look what they haven't been doing, which is educating, educating their students. Them. Exactly. Right, our, our kids. And, you know, it's interesting that you point out like this lack of accountability. So I got stories for days, okay, on public school stuff. This is why, like, a lot of libertarians, I feel like, are against public schools, like, on principle. They're just like, oh, you know, no government, government's bad, blah, blah, blah. Like, like they're coming more from a, um, I don't want to say academic, but for lack of a better word, they're coming from more an academic perspective, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, and I'm not disagreeing with them. I, before I became a libertarian, became very disenfranchised with this whole idea of public school because I was seeing garbage coming out. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean the people. I mean, the results right. of all these years, yep. you know, and just the way they responded. So when I was a youth director for a church. Um, Is it funny that I always just smile a little bit whenever you say that? He's yeah, like, just, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But when, when, all right, but I smile when I, no, when no, I, when no. I smile at the point I say was. Conversation later. Conversation later. <laughs> so <laughs> when I, I, I used to be a, a youth director and I worked with families that were basically from the wrong side of the track mm -hmm. out in Richmond, Indiana. And it was a particular street called 11th Street. Okay. And we would just say, like, those are the 11th Street kids. And and it wasn't it wasn't denigrating them. It was right. just, like, this is the, basically the geographical location where they lived. And there was a large number of kids that we interacted with okay. from in their families as well on that street. And one of the mothers came to me and she said, my son, I'm going to make up a name, my son Jimmy is afraid to go to school. He's getting bullied and picked on. And his older brothers can't do anything about it. Because they've gotten in so much trouble, they're basically on their last strike. And he's he was just like a little guy. He was like third grade or something like that, right? Fourth grade, I think. Yes, fourth grade. Were you and, going to trombone classes with No, him? no, no. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so how yeah, you really so, met Jimmy? So, so the, the mother, and, and, and I'm going to try to say this in a way that's not, that doesn't, I, I'm not trying to. Just admit, say it. I'm not trying come, to be mean dude, about Just her. say it. Okay, come on. But if you look at her appearance. Uh-huh. Based on how society is, right. there was nothing to say I should take this person seriously. Okay. The way that she dressed, the way that her hair looked, okay. you know, her weight, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not I'm not denigrating. I'm just saying, like, look, 
people judge by appearances, they do. whether you like That's it reality. or not. That's reality. We all, okay. but we all do. We all do. Right. We're all guilty. It was this. very clear just by looking at her. She probably come from the poor side of town. Okay. And the way that she talked and carried herself. Okay. Again, not diminishing anybody. So I said, well, you know, what? I'll go with you to the principal and we'll see if we can't have a conversation. So I, we made an appointment with the principal. Okay. So her and I went in and uh, we started talking to the principal and her son, uh, he was in fourth grade. And we talked with the principal. We're like, hey, this is what's going on. He's getting bullied on the way home. He's getting bullied sometimes on the way there. Uh, the mother was like, sometimes I literally have to drag him to school. And she's like, I want him to go to school. I want him to get his education, right? And this is what the principal told us. He said, well, he's probably just anxious because of the, the leap between third and fourth grade. And I, I – now – I'm more savvy today, and I would have had a lot more to say, and I would have really took him through the ringer. Uh -huh. At the time, I was like in my mid twenties, and so I, I, but I was really caught off guard. And and I and I, at the time, at that age, I wasn't very good at dealing with being caught off guard. So I was just kind of stunned because I'm like, you know, like, then you're like, wait, wait is that what do you thing? Mean? Like what? Leaps in between third and fourth. Because uh -huh. my understanding was that leaps generally came um, between elementary school, middle school, yep. and middle school, and high school. Yeah, usually. Because they were physically separated. Mm -hmm. So once you got to high school, you yeah, were like in a new, new building, environment. New kids, once everything. you got to middle yep. school, new environment. There like I remember I, on orientation day going and seeing a kid with a beard. That, right. that right. threw me off more than right. anything. Yep. Right. And so third and fourth grade were in the same building. You're at the same You're kids. seeing the same kids. You're you the same might teachers. Even, you might even have the same teachers. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I was like, the hell? But that was his answer. Like, he's just anxious. But and I'm like... What how, really made me how mad, many times? I'm sorry. We just told him he's being picked on. He doesn't want to go to school. Sorry, my voice, everybody. He's going. To, he doesn't want to go to school because he's being picked on. We literally told him that. No, no, no. He's anxious. Like mother effer. Like but, that's but, what I wanted. But, but I wanted what happened to, that okay. day? How did you leave up out of there? With that, <clears> did you kind of I, accept I, that answer and kind of like, oh, okay, I, I, you decided to work I, with I, it? I, I think we were just like, uh, I, I think we did give a little pushback. So, but I don't think it was enough. That's right, and and that's the problem is. Like I was immature, so I didn't know to really stand my ground, you know, and be like, no, that answer is unacceptable. But you better many, figure something how else. How many out. times do you think that has become the acceptable answer? Meaning he's given it to people throughout. Well, they've come to complaints, right. they come and, and the type of people that they are, they're like, Oh, right. wait a minute, you know, he's he's the principal and he knows so much more mm -hmm. than me. It's just this parent right. over here. And so he kind of takes it and they think, Oh, that must be the reason, right. and they leave, right. rather than go. No, this that seems absurd. Right. They don't have they don't have it inside of them to push back right. because we've kind of said that's the principle. You know, right. whoa, yeah. You know, and he, and he I think it's everything. I think in you know I think in fairness, um, there is a certain attitude that is present more so in the middle class and upper class where they'll look at it and be like, I don't like your answer, and I don't really give a damn that you're the principal. That's not the answer I'm looking right. for, period. I think there's a little bit more of that willingness to accept it mm -hmm. when you're in the poorer communities because you've not, like a lot of people in those communities haven't really been in a position where they could push back and win. Win, right. Right? Yep. And so this is just so another just one of those. It. You just kind of, right. okay. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 they, and, and the acceptance isn't really like, oh, he must be right, I must be wrong. It's just like, Oh, that didn't work. I guess. Yes, it's, no, I'm done. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, not like, it's not like, oh, you're right. Okay. Right. What am I going to do? Because I'm going to tell you right now, if, if our son was in a school and my wife went in and they were like, yeah, he's just anxious. And she's like, no, I just told you. She would tell them. She would be like, no, I just told you what the problem was. Why aren't you listening? You know, she would absolutely say, I would say that now because right. I'm a little bit older. Um, but at the time I just didn't, I didn't have the knowledge necessary. Like I was young and immature. And then she, pro the, the, the woman is, I'm guessing here cause I don't really know, right. but I'm guessing that she probably had relatively similar experiences. It, like, it's probably, it, I'm just getting the door shut in my face. Yep. Uh, just one more time. And, and they just, that's, it. that's life. Now, now here's the thing. I, I, I think that the reason why the public school system in particular right. thrives, you know what right. I mean by thrives? Um, the reason why they do is be because parents are less involved than they should be. Right. Oh yes. You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I think that they they've learned parents don't really come in and hold things accountable. Right. Let, even in the private school that I was teaching at, most of the time you didn't hear from the parents because we had a lot of scholarship kids. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time you didn't hear from the parents until let me tell you something, I would fail a kid. 
Like, right. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Report card came out. Now, a lot of times the school didn't like that because that could mess with your funding if kids yeah. start failing. Yes. Like, okay. Yep. So they're like, hey, you know, what can you do? And I'm like, no, no, no. He didn't do the work. He's failing. Sorry. Right. And then that's when I hear, I, every marking period when report cards come out, I had to spend the next week saying, okay, after school, I'm about to have meetings with parents. The parents would come in and yell at me. Mm-hmm. about why is my kid failing? And I'd be like, well, they didn't do any of this work. This is the work they're supposed to do. And I'm like, I'm not going to pass them for not doing the work. Right. Yeah, that's why I didn't do well side teaching. Um, so, but it came to this point where a lot of times parents are not involved. Now, right. let me say it like this. So at the church, okay? Mm-hmm. So they expect the church to teach their kids all about Jesus and how to live. Okay, mm-hmm. we have that kid for an hour. Right. Okay, the rest of it falls on you. Right. And, and I think that because the school system, well, they're there every day. Yeah. So that's them that they need right. to take care of it. And so parents are almost hands off. Right. They and they are. just kind of, well, you know, whatever. And they don't think a whole lot of it. And, and I think that when you start paying for school, listen, yeah. when my boys would come home from school, I'd ask them questions. Right. And one. OK, so one time our oldest, he, he was fourth grade, I think it was. And he came home. I said, hey, what you learn today? That's every day. No, nah, nothing. I said, you need to go back to that school and tell him I want my money back. Well, he did the next day. <laughs> he went into his teacher. He goes, I was just telling you, my dad wants his money back. That's funny. But, but I think that when you have that, when you're right. invested in it, yeah. you hold things to a standard. Yes. But I think that we've lost that. We've right. put our trust into the public school right. system. And we're like, oh, they got it. Yeah. They don't got it. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know? and, and I think that go uh, uh, tapping onto that. In this particular story, and, and many stories like mm-hmm. it, and, and again, I know I'm making some speculation on how a particular person would act, but I think this is kind of like a, uh, uh, you know, you, we can talk about this particular scenario and say, and, and make some estimations based it, on how we know people behave, right? Mm-hmm. And even if you're in the poor community and you've been used, you've, you, you're used to having the door kind of shut in your face and you just kind of deal with it and figure it out, even poor people understand that if i pay for something i want to get my money worth right people by and large ignore the fact that they are paying for it they are. taxes yes right because it's not like a bill like your light bill mm-hmm. right because i know plenty of people who were in you know who were not wealthy who were you know in the lower socioeconomic mm-hmm. class and if something happened with the light bill and it jumped lights, up 100 bucks or something like that you know whoa. they're like what's going on uh-huh. why is this or you know if the lights go out and they're calling up and they're like hey the hell's going on you know like they know to do that yep. when it's paying when they're paying money but i think people by and large regardless of what social class you're in they um they ignore it when it's taxes so i think that by by doing this mm-hmm. by sending the money to the parents then you give them more of a reason to say to not tolerate these right. kind of answers. They start seeing, right? Uh-huh. Because the thing is, was this mom actively in, in, uh, engaged in the learning aspect? Maybe not. Why probably not. not. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't remember specifically. It's been a while now, but I, but I, to my knowledge, I don't think so. But she was active at least at this one moment, and she got the door shut in her face. Mm-hmm. So there was like no incentive there to say yes. We want you to be more engaged. Even though the same principal, the same teachers, if they're, if that child failed, right. would turn around and go, well, the parents aren't getting involved. Well, yeah, well, guess what? When the parents tried to get involved, you gave them garbage answers. Now, can, 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 like, I, can like, I poke like, at that seriously. for a second? And, okay. and I know I'm very tilted against the education no, no, system no, but, because I could go for two hours on stories, you know. But, but, but let, 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 let me poke that a little bit because here's what I mean. So... She wasn't concerned about the education. Right. She was concerned about my son's getting beat up or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. we want to term. And, and, and on the way to school and on the way home from school. Here's my problem. So you want the school to be responsible for your kids even after school? Sure, sure. No, you, you no, there's, there's you, you plenty think, to parse but, there, yeah. That, but that's what I'm saying is that I think that that's become our mentality that, you know what? Right. You're holding the school accountable for the wrong part of it. Right. That's your part. No, 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 the I education understand. part is their part. Correct. Go Correct. get out to that part of it. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand fully. And I'm not, but I'm not talking that mom out. But no, no, but I, 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 think that, I think that is indicative of how right. we see things. We're worried about when right. these things happen. Like, we right. don't want kids to get bullied in school, period. Right. And parents will, will speak up when that's happening. Yep. But when their kid's education is horrible right where's the speaking up where's right. the outrage and, and and i look at it and and to me what this really represents is not like it's a mentality great it's mom a, doing right. all the great things and everything she should i'm you know it's not that and i'm not really dogging around either no, no. what it's what it's really saying to me is like the school really didn't do much to try to incentivize the parents to be involved in the right place when it matters 
you know, like the school could have said, okay, let's, you know, they could have said, look, it's off school property. And I think he did, but you could say, look, it's off school property, but let's see what we can come up with. Yeah, maybe let's, we can talk to the kids and we'll say, you know, let's, let's talk to the kids. Let me, you know, you know, let me talk yep. to some other people. Maybe talk to a counselor. I, you know, let me try to do something, something. Uh -huh. you know, cause nobody likes it when you come to them and they just kind of like dismissive. Right. And that's very right. basically that's all it was. It was just dismissing it. Right. Yeah. And it's like, you can't just dismiss it because that was at least one concern. Yep. So now you've given this one mother one more reason to be less involved instead of giving her more reasons to be and, involved. And, there's, and, and to the child, it seems like there's no advancement. It's right. Because to him, right. even though mom went in and, and, and she took the little guy with her, right. uh, that there right. was still no change. Right. There was still, okay, they're still doing this on the way home. Right. In fact, if the word got out, it might have gotten worse, right? Because oh, your mom came yeah. in, brought and, the youth I don't, guy. I don't know what I don't know what made what I don't know what happened uh, with that particular child, but I know his older brother. One of he had like two older brothers. Mm -hmm. um, one of his older brothers, um, probably still in jail, but ended up going to jail. Um, and there was a big outcry from the city. Mm -hmm. uh, I had since moved away from Richmond because I used to work on that uh, that uh, on the, on that block all the time. 11th Avenue? Uh, 11th, Street. 11th Street. And I used to beg people to try to help me. Nobody seemed to want to help. Only the people that really cared. Mm -hmm. Like, who had like a, a heart for, you, you know, like... And they probably wasn't even their kids. Yeah, nope, nope, nobody. They, and, probably already, um, they probably already, their kids were probably past that age and, and everything. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and what, here's what happened. And I'm going to kind of bring, it's going to look like it's not relevant, but I'll bring it back. Give it a try. Um, so his older brother got, um, you know, uh, of age. Okay. Like 18, 19. Okay. Had a baby. Okay. The girl, and uh, the baby died from malnutrition, like literally just starved to death. Mm -hmm. Very sad. It was horrible. It was absolutely just like crushing, especially because I knew the kid. Right. And I'm like, that's not the kid that I last remember. But the the thing that bothers me is that it feels like everybody else wants it to be somebody else's problem. So the city I saw, I because uh, I was reading like the paper, the local paper, and mm -hmm. I would see like people writing in and opinions and I could go to their, the website and see all the comments and stuff like that. And people were like, oh, I can't believe this. You know, why wouldn't somebody be better? Why would, you know, was, and I was like, you know what? Um, by the time I got wind of it and was ready to write into the paper, like, a, you know, an opinion, mm -hmm. they were not, they were, they were, they were like, we're no longer taking we're the stories, see, right. about the, uh, you mm -hmm. know, comments about this story. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to write in and be like, look, I was a youth director at that time. I worked my ass off to try to improve the lives of these kids. And it was everything that I I could get to, uh, to get anybody involved. Mm -hmm. it, was any, it was everything I had to get somebody involved and nobody wanted to be involved. You know, you got educators that, you know, where they might try to make a difference. They just were dismissive. You had parents that would come to the church and they're like, don't these kids know how to act right? And I'm like, are you a retard? No. You know, I'm gonna have to edit that out. <laughs> Sorry, look, I know you're not supposed to say that. I get passionate really? about this and you know what? I'm not gonna edit that out. There you go. But, there you go. There it is. There's the real point. Keep going. So, so, but what, you know, it just bothers me that everybody always wants to, to give somebody, wants to push the blame on somebody else. The educators are like, oh, it's the parents. It's the administrators. You know, the parents are like, oh, it's the teachers. And I'm like, everybody has to learn their role. Mm -hmm. And you have to accept your role for what it is. If a child can't read, then one of two things. You, they should have never graduated. Right. Or you should accept that you failed. Because you failed at least by letting them get through thinking that they were doing well enough. Because if you can't read by the time you're in 12th grade, you shouldn't have made it past ninth grade. But you or, shouldn't have made or, it past fourth grade. I mean, depending on what <laughs> not yeah, read means. But, but, but the thing is, inside of that also, I think that's when the parents also right. had to have some oh, yeah. involvement. They oh, go, yeah. why does my kid know how to read? Right, right. You know, you I'm know. going to go to the school. Man, right. And even that's going to say, hey, and, this is the place that's supposed to do that. I'm going to go into yep. here and go, And going And on? I feel like one of the ways to get involvement is money mm -hmm. giving the parents money and say choose where your kid uh, when i mentored a kid here in town he actively went to another school uh he had to get like special permission to go right. to that school yep. and he ended up not you know he wasn't doing so well in that right. particular department and i worked really hard to try to to try to resolve that now i came in a bit late in the game and so you know things right. were kind of already rolling um, so it was, you know, it was kind of hard to stop a ball, you know, an avalanche that's going where you're, you've kind of already picked up. The yeah. Momentum. You're one person trying to hold it back. And, right. Yeah. Right. But, but here's the thing. Uh, I am true to my own words. I looked and I said, I am responsible. I, I worked with this guy once a week for a few hours, mm -hmm. 
once a week for a few, I was basically like church, you know, like a couple hours I had him, you know, and then he was basically with his family and friends and yeah. whomever else, right? And, but I never, ever said, well, I mean, I might say like, look, I was facing an uphill battle. I acknowledge that. But at the same time, I would say, it's my responsibility to figure out Did something. You... Because if I'm going to go out there and be a mentor and say, look, I'm going to try to make a difference in your life, then I need to make a difference and... in your damn life. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, then shame and, on me. And it's not just the easy right? things of, hey, we're going to go hang out. It's like, I got right. I, I to gotta help you in the yeah. tough fights and yeah. stuff along those lines. And, yeah. and I feel like this is, this is the big problem that we have with education system is that it is almost designed by nature to allow everybody to point to somebody finger, else. And, and so you, you know? can never kind of go, wait a minute, right. let's shove all of these in the place and right. let's start talking. But money changes, money changes things. things. Because when I give you $500 and I say, you pick the school that your kid wants to go to, it's in your hand. You have to physically hand that $500 over to somebody and say, please take this money and make my kid smart. Mm -hmm. Right is basically I mean, like, effectively. Like, could you imagine if there was actually a standard that says, "Hey, wait a minute, um, these kids have failed. They're the the school now." And I'm saying, I'm not saying that all kids. Some kids have disabilities, stuff along right. those lines. But let's say that they, they look at it and they go, "Well, these kids are failing right. throughout." Right. So we're now taking the money back from you, right? And we're going to go bring it over to here, right? I bet that then that starts making yep. starts making something too. But I think that the idea, if you tell these parents, "Hey, say, hey, listen, this is your money." Like this is your $500 here, for mm -hmm. example. This is your $500. You can say and teach your kids or you're going to pay somebody your money because get mm -hmm. it in their mind because that's what right. it is. It's their money. It's their tax yeah. money coming back to them. Right. So imagine getting that in their mind. Say, or you're going to take your money now yep. and you're going to pay it to them. What do you expect from them right. for your money? Right. Instead of this, because that's the downside of the vouchers. Right. Okay. The vouchers never get seen as my money. Right. They just see, oh, it's this to here. Who cares? Right. You know, it's a, it's a moving on. It's again. the public government money that yeah. was given to me. But when, right, God exactly. bless you guys. You're so awesome. You're giving you, me this $500. Clear, whatever. That doesn't happen. No, I Like that never happens. Um, so when you start making people, hey, this is yours. Right. People, when they start putting out their money. When there's ownership They have involved. different standards. Like, hey, wait, wait a minute. This doing is, what? what? What is happening? If you're so, watching and you're not a libertarian, you will find out that virtually Every answer that we have revolves around ownership. Mm -hmm. Ownership changes the dynamic. It changes relationships. This is why if I loan you $500, we are in some ways not no longer just friends, right? Because now you're indebted to me uh -huh. and that $500. Or I feel it, a certain it, way about that. Like, it could well, be $20. You know. yeah. I've seen people get upset and lose friendships friends over, over like yep. $20, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, and, and $20 can be a lot. I'm not, I'm not, well, maybe not with inflation, but it, effectively it's- $20 used to be. I mean, used $20 to be. $20 used to be a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, you know, I'm saying like, like it changes things. It changes how people think. It changes what people insist and demand upon, right? I've, I, when I worked at Burger King, people would come in and they would, I thought they were going to come over the counter over a $3 burger, right? You know, cause they're like, and, and you know what it would be? It would be something silly. Like- I said no pickles. Right. There's pickles on I here. I paid for this, and I expected it to right. be a certain way. And all they had to do was be like, "Hey, man, I, I said no pickles. Can you remake this?" But, but they wouldn't. They would come in because they had an expectation yep. because they paid for it. Mm -hmm. Right. The same thing applies to education. Now, we talked about money. I know you. You got any place you want to go? Because I got a place I want to go. Oh, hey, dude, it's your show. I, I know. You but let me I know. Sit in the room with you. I, I, know, I know. Okay. <laughs> But I, like, but well, we do have to remember as you do this. Remember, we we have to always get back to okay, what are some solutions? We, right, because we 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 forget those. Right, we get caught well, I want to. I, I do want to address some things. Okay, I want to address one more thing. Money, actually. So a lot of people say, well, the problem is that we're just not giving enough money, right? So have you ever heard of M Street School? No. Okay, M Street. So uh, you know who uh, Thomas Sowell is, right? Yes. So I read some. He's he's a uh, for anybody that doesn't know Thomas Sowell, he's like ninety some years old. He's you know he's an economist and he's like brilliant. Like virtually anybody that likes him loves him because he's so friggin' brilliant. And we have all been impacted by reading his stuff. Like he's mm -hmm. just really he's he's very well. Uh, he, he writes very well. Very simple to understand. I mean, he's just heavily quoted, guy. especially more lately. Oh, yeah, it's like yeah. people are starting to wise dude, up to him. Oh, man, yeah. like, like this dude, mm -hmm. he does not get enough justice with his name. Like he has really put out some good stuff. So he wrote this paper on a on a school on M Street School, and it was back in like the eighteen hundreds, I think. But M Street School had this like 80 year period where it was 
underfunded. It was a it was one of four schools that was publicly funded and or one of four major public mm-hmm. schools, I think, publicly funded in Washington, DC. And it was uh it was a black all black school. And then they had three white schools that uh, that were their counterparts. Okay. The white schools were funded well enough. Right. Probably pretty well. And this school was very well underfunded. Um, there you go back and you do the research, you find mm-hmm. out that this school um regularly outpaced the white counterparts. Yep. They had a number of first. So they had like I'm trying to remember. I should have. I should have wrote. wrote you should, down yeah, you should, if you were going to bring a specific, one, right? They should. But they, uh, the, it was like they had like the first black uh, student to graduate from Annapolis, mm-hmm. and the first black student to do this, and they had a number of students go on to college, and not just like oh, the local community college where they they barely skated by. Like no, they went to reputable colleges, yeah. and they did very very mm-hmm. well, and there there was just first all over the place. They had a whole bunch of first. One of the things that they were very clear about, they were like, look. They told parents, they said, this is the expected behavior of your child. If your child does not meet this behavior, they will be removed. Yep. This is the expected level at which they are they are expected to perform at this particular level. We will work with them, but they are expected to meet this standard. And it wasn't like a, uh, a standard of like, you know, testing. I, I don't think it was more like our particular standard like we have this standard so that we know that you are learning and because of that they had a lot of first and they had a lot of uh, great things happen and then eventually you know politics got involved and some things changed or whatever and the school kind of is is now like every other school right right but but in its heyday and we're talking 80 year period so we're not talking like like one year. year right you know 80 years where it, um, you know, they, they, I don't want to say they always outperformed all the white kids. No, but, but I remember once you start talking about going by purple, I'm like, oh yeah, they, yeah. they were legit. Like they, yeah. yes. Yeah. They, 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 they earned it. Yep. Whatever, whatever they got, they definitely earned it. Mm-hmm. And they did, they were underfunded constantly. Did you, you know, so it is something not... there that we tend to overlook the behavior of the students. I think there is, the I think so. Yeah. I mean, because as a teacher, let me tell you something. You have a kid who speaks out, or does you know? There's a, I was there's always a class class. Uh, like I, that always. was okay. Yeah. And you have some that are a little more malicious. They're not always just joking. Some right. some kids are mean sometimes. Okay, and, and so I, here's what happens: if I'm in the middle of teaching something, and I got to deal with you for a minute, right? Okay, now I've I've lost my flow. Kids are now focused over here. Right. They're still messing with that. By the time you right. get them back again, you've lost X amount of time. Right. And, and so I think that part of the problem that we could be looking at, because and, and maybe I'm gonna I'm not gonna defend the public school. Right. But I'm gonna say schooling period. Right. That maybe part of our problem is we're not expecting our kids to behave a certain way that right. is conducive to the right environment. Because now we've come to this time where we don't do anything to our kids. Our kids right. don't get in trouble anymore. They, right. You know, there's no. And, and so, is it possible? And I'm I'm asking it's just as a question then. So as we bring that back down the line public school tends to get away with whatever they want how the right the, instead of fixing the kids they get metal detectors right you know okay so then they do that they just whatever minimum security prison type of thing okay right. now you get into private schools or parents are paying for it you tend to find that those disciplinary things drop down because we expect you to be like this act right. like this or you're out get into homeschool and now there's even less that because your mom is not going to take that off of you right. while you're sitting right. there. And, and so can we factor in the behavior in what we expect as teachers yes. and parents yes. and a lot like how can we start factoring that in? I think in? so. And 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 I I wouldn't say it's the thing, right? I think no, it's no, one no, element, there's right? many things but, in this. But I think you do bring a good, a good point because I uh, I was not homeschooled. But I watched my brother and my sister get homeschooled. Okay. And I also watched my mother, that, that same 11th Street group that mm-hmm. I was talking about. My mother actually homeschooled like six or seven of the kids from there Okay. by herself. She went and paid for all the materials, went and did all a bunch of research. You know, did tried they, to figure did out they how to pay her? It. Nobody paid her. Hmm. She just did okay. it because a lot, of the, a lot of those kids were, um, you know, they were on the verge of getting removed from school because yep. of their behavior, yeah. stuff like that. And so she was like, you come to my house, here are the rules. Period. There it is. Right? Yep. Like she had rules and she would remove them. Like, like I don't know. I'm trying to remember if it ever happened. I can't remember now. Um, but um, I went to public school. I also went to private school. Mm-hmm. And kids are kids in, in both, you know, like they're, they're mean. They pick on each other. There's a bully. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I, all that stuff. Happens, that to go to right? yeah, you're However, like, okay. there, is a, there was a distinct difference. I didn't have metal detectors when I went to private schools. Right. And there were certain, like, there was like a ceiling for bad behavior. And if you broke, like, if you, 
breached that ceiling, mm -hmm. which was lo way lower than public schools. If you breached that ceiling, you were done. They didn't want your money either. Yeah, it's, right. Okay. And that was a, so that was a big deal because <clears throat> imagine somebody saying, I don't want your money. Well, that, that's, that like, means your kid has misbehaved so badly that I would rather them not be here than take your money and try to deal with it. So he, let, let that's me, a, that's a big thing that sends a big signal to people. Uh, so uh, okay, so <clears throat> when I was in this, when I was teaching in the school, I was actually the dean of students. Okay, okay, so I did both. I, I taught in the classroom. Right. But I was dean of students, and so um, we kind of. The first year that they opened the school, they didn't really have any guidelines about like, what do we do for disciplinary action? So I kind of put that in place. And since I was the one to come up with the ideas, they said, oh, oh you're the guy. Right. So I became the dean of students with that. And, and so we started kind of saying, okay, here's the standard. And we started putting kids out. Right. Like we, and, and it, it's so funny because now as we're kind of lumping in the child's behavior. So there was this one student, actually, I think we had just kicked his brother out a few mm -hmm. months beforehand. Right. Okay. So we, we brought him in and we end up, we we're kicking him out. I'm like, you know what? Call him in. We're done here. Like, and, right. and they kind of, I love the fact that this private school is willing to give me that freedom to go, all right, Tom, if you think we're done, right. we're done. Right. Like, we're not going to worry. We're out. Right. We'll figure it out. And so I do remember that when we did that the next day, the, the mom came up to the school because she wanted to plead the case. Now, all of a sudden she's worried about her right. son's education. Right. She don't worry about him failing the classes he was failing, but now all of a sudden you're going to send right. him home to me? Now all of a sudden they right. want to be a part of this. Yes. And, and, and so here's what was funny, very telling. So she came in that day with him. He he came in and I look over and he's actually, while she's in the office pleading his case, he's out there playing basketball with the other kids in the gym. Yes. Wow. And I'm like, and I, and like, I made it very clear to my boys because um, uh, for that whole time, my youngest son was right. in that school. And later on, my older son came into the school and I'm, and I'm like, y'all know, like, oh no, we know that would be <laughs> like, right. th if you, if you get suspended or kicked out of school, I can assure you, you're right. not going to want to be around me. Right. Yeah. This is not going to go well for you. Right. I mean, then, it's to have that. Yeah. It's the, it's the idea that if you raise the, the standard, mm -hmm. even if people like, you can raise the standard too high, obviously, right? Yeah. Like, like that's possible. Like, yeah, be but realistic. You, they are still kids. But if you raise the standard, mm -hmm. one, you're telling people like, I think you can do this yes. thing, right? Like, if I say, hey, you can do, I don't know, fifty pull ups. Like you, like, like no, dude, I can, I can barely do one. Like, no, but you can, you can work up to fifty. You can totally do it. You know, like if somebody has a little confidence in you, that gives you a little boost. Like, well, yes, maybe, like I maybe I can, can. do that. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm not presently able to do that, but maybe I can do that. There's this work involved that can get right. me there. And so I think this gives people some sort of, um, a, you know, some sort of vision of achievement to, yep. to have. Right. The other thing is that um, it holds them accountable. Yes. And when people get held accountable, they it modifies their behavior. So I will give you. You want to hear another story? I would, do you have another one? Dude, I got stories. Okay. Days, then, but I got another story. By all means, give us so, the other one. So here's another story about that. And I swear it's relevant. So remember, I was a youth director and I worked with kids that were, you know, from the wrong side of the tracks. They were constantly getting in trouble. Like they would come in and, you know, parents would be like, the little Lily parents would be all like, do you allow them to cuss? I'm like, no, I don't allow them to cuss. But they do. But it does happen <laughs> because... These are kids that are constantly in trouble and blah, 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 blah. So they, you know, they're cussing they're, is so far down the line of the right, problems. Like, you yes. know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they don't carry a gun. Okay. Like, <laughs> like, like work with me here. So, um, and they were good kids. Don't you, bro? They, they were, they were, they were good people. They just were very, very misguided. Um, I want to parse my words because I don't want people to be like, oh, he's talking crap about him now. That they're going. No, not, not at all. So, um, you think they're listening? There, uh, who knows who's listening, right? I, I know one of the kids that I used to be a youth director for does follow me on Facebook. We're connected on so Facebook. So you better too. act right then. So right, be, if not, be he'll be the, yeah. check the comments. So check the uh, comments. Like he's but, talking but, about me. That guy's a jerk. In fact, actually, that same person is involved in the story, but I'm I'm gonna keep it limited here. Okay. So we're past there's a young limited. man. There's a young. This is not the person, but there's a young man, and I got told in his list. Call him Johnny. Somebody came and said. Hey, Johnny's really upset at so and so uh, and and their boyfriend. And I said, okay. So I went to Johnny and I said, look, I know you're upset. Don't start no trouble. Just go home. Okay, deal. Okay. Or, or they call me Daniel. Mm -hmm. Okay, Daniel. So they go home and just 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 leave it alone. Let it, let it drop. Go home. So a few minutes later, like twenty minutes later, because you know everybody talks. Yes, yeah, so it's not so, dropped. <laughs> so so he's so somebody comes up and they're like, Johnny's outside and. So and so's dad, it's got a rock and about to hit him in the head. And I was like, Their uh, dad was about to. So apparently Johnny had went and 
It was stirring up trouble to the point where dad felt like he had to defend the family because Johnny was being so aggressive. Okay. And and I don't don't really know all the details, but that's that's as much as I know. So I go out there. Now I'm pissed because I'm like, I told you to go home. I told you to drop it. Now I got a dad wanting to smack you with a rock, right? (laughs) Uh, Protecting his family. Uh And, and, you know, and I'm like, this is not acceptable. So I go, and the kid's bigger than me, like everybody else in the room. So I go. Fifth grader. Um, yeah, he was <laughs> so I go, uh, he was probably like 15 at the time. So I go and I'm mad. I'm yelling. I'm like, I told you to not hold you. <laughs> so I, and it was kind of, it was like autumn or something like that. So I grab him by his like vest coat or what he's wearing. I drag him off the property. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as we get off the property, I just push and I'm like, go home. I'm yelling at him. I'm like, go home. <laughs> right. And so I'm yelling at him to go home and he goes home. Now I'm kind of upset because I'm like, you know, they know. They know what I expect of them. Mm -hmm. This is not acceptable. They know. Don't pull this crap on me. So I talked to my my ex-wife. I talked to her and I'm like, we need to go and have a conversation. This is not going to be pleasant. So we go to his house afterward and I said, you know better. I told you to go home even before this altercation started when something was brewing. Mm -hmm. You didn't listen. Then I had to physically remove you. I don't like having to physically remove people from church. If you come back to church within the next two months, I will have you arrested for trespassing. That's what I told him. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And I don't know how your church feels about things, but the church that I was going to, there were several members that were really concerned because they were like, what if he doesn't learn about Jesus? I'm like, well, clearly he wasn't. He's a, he's been here and clearly like, Jesus isn't getting through. I think we're, right. I think we can wait so eight more I'm weeks. Like, uh, so I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, we got to draw the line. Mm-hmm. We have to tell them this behavior is not acceptable. You know what didn't happen? Because we used to run a Friday night, um, like little club where we'd play like Christian rock music and have like a pool table in there they could play on and we'd mm-hmm. play silly games and yeah. stuff like that. Right? So we do this fun stuff. And, and they loved it. They would it, like, there were lots of kids. We'd get like 20, 30 kids it, showing it up. It's the craziest rolling. thing. The things that they would ordinarily, if it was just somebody out there, like, that's stupid. I'm not going to go do that. Right. But you put it in there and all of a sudden, like, this is the greatest thing right. ever. So, so they would, and they would have it. But we were always getting kids that were basically for, you know, from the troubled areas of town. And so you had to have an extra eyeball on them, right? Mm-hmm. You had to. And, and the thing is, I had to set rules and make it clear that you might not have to make from the middle class and upper class. Maybe some of them depends on which rules. Right. Right. You know, but there were some rules like, you know, uh, or you might have just more frequently let them know. Hey guys, remember, we still don't do this. Right. You know, I just told you five minutes ago. And and I'm not dogging. I'm just saying like there were some behaviors that were more frequently occurring, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, And so uh, for me, I look at it and I say, yeah. Going back to the education, the school, you have to set a standard, whatever environment that you're in, and you have to hold yourself accountable. So me, I looked at it and I said, anything that happened while they were under my authority was my fault. Tell me. It doesn't matter if I told them 12 times and they walked immediately out the door and did it. It was my fault. Yep. Right. And, I, and I've always held that. And this is one of the reasons why I, get, I, I bag on teachers so bad because I'm like, the moment they're like... Oh, it's the, no. They stopped ownership. You it's ownership only own to get my check. In fact, I tell you what, you own more than you should because usually when you do, people will actually have sympathy on you and they'll be like, oh, you know, actually you're being a little hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't like it when somebody's like, oh, it's the parent's fault. It's this person's fault. It's, you know, no, take responsibility because sure enough, if a kid graduates and, and they come to valedictorian, you're going to be like, look, that was my student. I did everything for that kid. You know, you could be like, uh, you know, I spent like three extra minutes every day with them, you know, just like, you know, whatever. Yeah, and, we, we take the win, not the loss. Yeah, you have to take them both. Yep. You know, profit and loss, <laughs> you know, economics 101. Oh, that's, no, remember, that's we're, talk, we're, talk, we're, we're talking but, about school teaching. Right, so. right. But no, that's same, out also. Same concept, profit and loss, right? We, you know, and, and so I That all of a sudden, these that. kids, here's yeah. the thing, if, if kids start getting pulled out of the school. Right. Then all of a sudden they go, wait a minute. Now guess what happens? Right. Now the administrators are tend to go, what are you doing? Right. We, this, no, yes. and you're a bad teacher. It's time for you to go. You, right. you don't fit into what we're trying right. to accomplish here. You don't but fit if the in. money's coming need, no matter what. You need what, retrained something. Think of it this way. Walmart, horrible customer service right. as a whole. Every right. now and then you find the good ones. Right. But as a whole, they're not worried about it. Stores aren't clean anymore. Walmart right. used to be clean. They did? Yeah. From Yeah. Like, I remember sometimes <laughs> okay. they would be clean. Maybe like That's when they first built them. They got okay. a new Walmart and it stays there. Oh, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. Brand new So one. Walmarts would be clean. People would be friendly, stuff along those lines. And now you realize they got self-checkout things everywhere. Right. Customer service is not a high priority. Here's why. Walmart has learned they're going to come to us no matter what. Right. Like they know that no matter what. Right. I'm, 
I complain about Walmart and I go to Walmart. Right. I hate the self checkout thing. I'm like, right. give me the discount, whatever. Right. You know, oh, that's a whole other story. But the whole point of it is, if they have this under shades, they're going to come right. no matter what. Who cares? Right. They're right. Walmart's right. Guess what the public school system says? Right. They're going to come no matter what. Yep. What's the alternative? Right. Right. Because it's compulsory. Yep. And people aren't. They're not basically physically handing over their money. I mean, they are in a sense, but it's in in such a convoluted way the, the, that people don't really see it as handing over, their, over money, their money, even though they actually have. Let me ask you like this. Okay, so we had the big strip, which I know you said you had was about the critical race theory stuff inside the school. Oh, there's and, more than I got a lot. Oh yeah, and, and remember yeah. our next our bill thing is about school yeah. stuff also. Yeah, what. This episode is going to be a little long, people, so Set bear with us. It, it's, all for, it's all for your good. It, it's all for the, it, it, it's for the public good. <laughs> whoever the public is. So so here's what happens. It is, is that, dang it, what did you do to me? What was my point? I don't know. Did you have one? You sure? I always have a point. It's always there. All right, hold on. So we're talking about how they get the money no matter what. And we start pulling the money out and then the kids start coming. I'd love to help you, but I don't know where you're going either. Oh, critical race theory. Okay. Oh, yeah. So all the parents went crazy about, oh, I can't believe they're teachers. I can't believe they're teaching this. And they made their stink. Okay, great. I love the idea. Get involved finally. Right, right. How many of them pulled their kids out? Right. How many of them said, right. I'm out? Right. No. They made their stink. What are you not going to do this? Okay, and now they we, got a, some, we got some, a governor now. Some boob oh, over in Virginia or whatever. Yep. Yep, and it's like, oh, we're not going to do this anymore. Okay, and they all like, oh, okay, now we can go back to not being involved anymore. Right. Now we can go back to just bad education and not right. this curriculum. Right. And, and so, like, I looked at that, I go, okay, who made their stand? Yeah. They didn't. They made right. a little stink for a little while, yep. which is very indicative of people as a yep. whole. I made my stink, I'm fine now. No, no, do something. Right. Make something happen, because right now the school system is able to go, who pulled their kids? Right. Like, they're going to look at that, and, who pulled their kids out? And, and I think this is going to be a great segue to the bill review. Because one of the things that people like to do. So hold on, are you jumping us into the bill review? I think like, so. Are I you going to pause I, us and then bring no, us to no, bill no. review? No, no, no. I'm going to I'm going to say something. Then we'll play our little clip here, our, our little bill review clip. Unless you've got some more. No, no, dude, I'm good. I think Go this ahead. is good. I All think right. it's a great segue because you're like, hey, they made a stink, and then they then they they elected some boob, and then uh and, and then he's like, oh, we're going to ban critical race theory and all this other stuff. And the bill that I want to talk about today is actually a bill in Florida that attempts to somewhat do the same thing. And what I want to talk about is the lack of involvement of people. And that lack of involvement, remember, the bill review is meant to show you how much you can learn about a bill just by reading it. You don't have to be a lawyer, right? Right. I am not a lawyer. Uh, you know, I'm a public school student. You know, I was a public school student. They played the trombone so, with, ch with yeah, children. Yeah, I play. <laughs> wow, that sounds so weird. Like, people are going to be so like, true. If they map. just listen to that. He's a map. <laughs> That's why he I'm, had that episode. I am not a map, okay? <laughs> Jeez, people. All right. It's not untrue that you played the trombone I, I, with children. <laughs> So, Go to your, your I should have, some stories should never be told. <laughs> should yeah. never be I really need like I need someone to go up ahead of me and be like, nope, no, yeah, no, don't, 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 don't mention that, that. Dude, don't, don't bring that, that up. That's you're, gonna get, get you're gonna get dragged gonna, so hard. Let for me that. be very clear. This isn't stopping in this episode. All right, that's fine. All right, that's fine. All right, it's coming around. That's okay. So the bill review is meant for people to to realize what you can learn just by reading it, a very simple reading mm -hmm. overview of it. So we're going to get into that bill review and we're going to talk about why just going and making a stink and maybe electing somebody that's going to do something yep. about it or having a bill pass that's going to ban CRT is not necessarily is not necessarily a good idea, but even more than that is probably a bad idea and still leaves your child on the hook to be poorly educated. Yep. So let's go ahead and make that quick segue here. So here we are. But I know I'll be a law someday, at least I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. All right, so we are back. And we have a new background, so now you know. Now you the know. Bill review. And this is serious stuff right. now. Now, yeah, this now is, it's real. This is the house chamber. Um, we so traveled. In case any, yep, we just were like, we just moved right on over. So there we are. So what I want to do is, uh, we're going to talk about this bill. And this bill review is, let me pull the bill up here so we can take a peek at it. So this is the, it's SB 148. It's a Senate bill in Florida here. And it is called the, um, the Individual Freedom Bill, I believe, is the title, the official title of it. So let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. We're going to just dive right on in. You did read it, right? 
Okay. Perfect. Listen, I went through most of all of it, and which I hate you for. Right. Okay. Because I like. Okay, dude, give me a summary. So I read the summary, and the summary really didn't clear it up very well. Gotcha. Like I read, like I'm like, okay, I'm like, and I start looking, I'm like, wait a minute, it seems like there's other stuff inside of here. Right. And then so I had to go through it. Yeah. So I got some, I got some good stuff to go okay. through. So voila, there it is up on the screen. Now everybody can see it. Uh, Florida Senate bill. It's for 2022. So this is really recent, and you may have seen some news articles. I'm going to point those out in just a moment. But for right now. Let's start in on this bill. So we're not going to read the whole thing. It's like 18 pages. And a lot of these bills, just so you know, what they do is they're very long. And sometimes what they are is they're adding or deleting from current statutes, mm -hmm. which is what this one does. So when you see like an underline, you know that's a new addition. When you see a strike through, you know that's a deletion. So we're not going to go through all of it. But I want to point out here, I've got it highlighted. It's, you know, basically what this bill does is it addresses the... Uh, Ideas that a spouse promotes, advance, inculcates, or compels um, an individual to believe specified concepts that constitute discrimination based on race, color, sex, or national origin. So effectively, this bill is clearly an attempt to fight back against CRT. Okay. And it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't think it mentions CRT anywhere in here. It doesn't say the No, left. I didn't see it. It doesn't say uh. critical race theory. It doesn't say critical theory. It, it, so it tries to sidestep it. And there's a good reason for that. And the reason is because opponents and proponents can't seem to agree on what CRT even is, right? And I think what happens is you got a lot of these ideas that kind of funnel under the umbrella right. of CRT. And people, you know, what, what you hear is that, oh, we're just going to teach about race. Now, that's not what we're going to get into. We're not going to get into what CRT is or what it is. I, I don't have that in any yeah. of my things. Right. Yeah. I just kind of want to say that this is clearly an attempt to to fight back against CRT. And so a lot of people are like, yeah, we should fight back against it. This is a bad bill, in my opinion. We're going to get into that. So, um, it, But what it does is it attacks concepts that are promoted by those pushing about things like privilege, equality, equity, and so forth. So let's take a look here. So you see that on the left that you got the number of line items. So one of the things that I really hate about bills, um, in this particular case, uh, you see that it says an act relating to individual freedom, and then it has a semicolon amending, blah, 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 semicolon providing. And just you semicolons. You don't learn how to read through a bunch of stuff. And just semicolons all the way through. This is literally like one big, long sentence. I absolutely hate that because people do not, we're not accustomed to reading that. So it makes it very difficult to read the bill. Which could be a level of intentionality. I think it is very intentional. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I got that marked as one ridiculously long sentence that goes from line one to line 34. They must have gone to public school. Yeah. And they so, didn't well, learn about well, a run on sentence. Line 34. 34, you're and at? So, okay. Yeah. So, so it, you know, then it ends with, you know, conforming cross references, semicolon, providing an effective date. So like, this is a really long sentence. So it's very hard to read because it's like adding all these things. Now it might technically be a complete sentence because they're using the semicolon. I am not an English major to be able to identify 34 lines, whether or not it is properly yep. a sentence. All I know is that's not what people are used to reading. And we should actually be kind of irritated by that. We should say, hey, look, why can't it make be this simple? more readable? Can, can, like, if not, if you have to write it this way legally, because like I'm starting to realize, like, even laws here in town, sure, they have people who write and put them together. And I right. get that this has to happen, I guess, right? But there should be a version of this that is not so legal. And it's just yeah. here you go, right? Like, here's what this is saying pull out all the junk. Here's the point, right? Hey, I know a guy who's trying to do something, go ahead, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so, so, so that's kind of what we've got going on here. That's my first beef with it is that like, look, it's ridiculously long. Then we get here and we see in lines 43 to 50, right? And it says, I'm going to read it here. It says, you know, it's, it's, it's adding to this current statute 760.10 unlawful employment, employment practices. So it's a, and so it's, a, it's adding this 8A. Okay, that's what that's what we're doing because it's underlined. So it's saying so. Um, so what is constitutes unlawful employment okay. practices, and that is subjecting any individual as a condition of employment, membership, certification, licensing, credentialing, or passing any examination to training, instruction, or any other required activity. So we'll stop there for a second. So basically, anything that you need to get a job. Okay. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yep. Like if you got to do some training, you got to pass a test, you got to get a certificate. So, so any of these things that are necessary for you to get a job. Okay. Um, so what's unlawful is any activity that espouses, promotes, advance, inculcates, or compels such individual to believe any of the following concepts constitutes discrimination 
based on race, color, sex, or national origin under this section. So anything that we're getting ready to walk through, anything underneath of here, it constitutes discrimination. And so therefore, it is unlawful for employment. Okay. The first problem that we have is that as a libertarian, this actually is a violation of um, of our platform, or it goes against our platform. It's not really a violation because that's not really how our platform works. So I want to read something really quickly about our platform. So let me go on, go on over here and boom, right up on screen. Look at that. We got some good stuff going on you're, here. You're all over it. Yeah, I'm all Your over it. Your producer's on it. So 3.5, rights and discrimination. So the Libertarian Party has a platform, and this is basically just like what you can look at it is if you're not familiar with it. It's just kind of like this series of um, uh, we call them planks, but this series of uh, comments about particular topics that we feel are important to present to the world. They're not full on. They're not necessarily like the super duper philosophically correct. R right. And we, and we even have internal disagreements about them. So, um, but 3.5, the very last sentence here, and let me go ahead and highlight it. It should highlight up on the screen. Look at that. This is great. Man. Members of private organizations retain their rights to set whatever standards of association they deem appropriate, and individuals are free to respond with ostracism, boycotts, and other free market solutions. Now, a public school is not a private organization. However, what this law does mm -hmm. is, remember, the law compels you to go to school, to right. go to a, a public school or a private school or homeschool. So it compels you to do one of these things. Most people um, opt for the public, public school, school. Mm -hmm. just because it's easier. But we believe in the freedom of association. Sure enough. And part of that association is that um, employment practices, which are private, mm -hmm. are permitted to say anything because it's a private organization. It's my I, right? That's what I choose to do. So mm -hmm. even though you might be able to say this about public schools, like, hey, you can't teach certain things in a public school because we're the government, we're running the public school, they do not run um, private organizations. Even right. though they they exert authority, we actually disagree with a lot of that authority. Okay. And one of the things that we would disagree with is that, a, that a, um, an organization cannot say, you have to receive this training that says these things about race or sex. I may disagree with the training, right. and that's okay. So what are we talking about here? Remember back a while, uh, there was that issue with Coca-Cola where it came out and it said to be less white, y and they yes. got dragged hard? Yep. This law would basically say, Coca-Cola, you are not allowed to do that. But here's the thing. Coca-Cola got taken over the rails for it. or They, over the, they, over they the faced the consequences it. of it. Right? Yep. It got out, and people were like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. And that is exactly what should happen. But Coca-Cola, because they own their company, they should be allowed to teach and say, hey, look, if you want to work here at Coca-Cola, you need to figure out how to be less white, whatever the hell whatever that means. Whatever that means, right. right? We're not going to go into that. So right off the bat, I have a problem with this law because it's telling private organizations, private companies, what they can do and how they can, uh, and, and, and the, the ideas that they can hold within their organization. And so that's that's already a big issue for me. Okay. So let's go back to the bill. I love this. This Back is great. I got my I got things going on today. All right. So <clears throat> so what it does is it lists a number of things. It lists eight things in here. And it said that um, that these constitute discrimination. They might sound good, but I don't think that just because something might be a good idea, it, it makes for good law. Right. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to walk through. Tub doesn't know I'm doing this because I did it like four in the morning when I had to get up with my son because uh, he wasn't feeling well. So I did this while he was awake, sitting there, not feeling so well. But I went through and I was like, oh, I got this idea. Let's see if I can argue why these are not good. Okay. Just a very simple argument. We're not going to get into depth. There's eight of them. Do I need to, do, can I leave? Like, no, does this have no, anything to do with me? Because I want you to tell me what you think about these. And we're going to, you're going to chime in on these. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through. And the, the point that we're having, the point that I'm trying to come across here is this bill is no good because... These ideas might be good, but there's also some room to argue with them. Okay. So therefore, if they're enshrined in law and, and there's a problem with them, then that means we've literally made a law for something that was no good. And now try to get it removed. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first one. All right. Where are you at? What law? Number one here, lines 51 and 52. I don't have them all highlighted because it would just look confusing. So I'll highlight them manually. There it is. So you can see it on the screen. You can see the gray that I highlighted. 
So it says members of one race, color, sex, or national origin are morally superior to members of another race, color, sex, or national origin. So what it's saying is if you are a company and you say that one member of one race, color, sex, or national origin is can, can be morally superior to another, then that's discrimination. Okay. So I kind of agree with that. You're right. However, I'm going to quibble at this. Okay. Here's what I wrote down. Let's see what you think. Any member or members of any group can be morally superior to a member or some members of another group. In other words, Tub is white, as you can see, so we'll just call him the white guy. Whoa. I'm a bit red, sort of. So I'm the, I'm the Native American, Indian. As I grew up saying Indian, whatever. Indian, yeah, yeah. So Go ahead. Um, uh-huh. Indian, feather, not dot. And too far? No, I think it, okay. I think it's fine. <laughs> okay. So in the Native American community, there can be some people who are more moral than some people in the white community. And likewise, yep. in the white community, there could be some people that are more uh, moral than in the Native American community. Right. Okay. Any disagreement? Well, so far, we're good. Okay. So what I'm disagreeing here with okay. is the wording, the way that is written. Because we're putting things into law. And if you if you pay attention to law, you'll notice that sometimes the wording is what matters. There have been cases, you can look them up, where people have won court cases on punctuation. Do you, do you understand that the wording is what makes it to the Supreme Court? Right. Many times that's what makes right. the argument. Is, so, hey, this says this, so we're going to find the way out so of it. So what they're saying here is, let's read it again. Okay. Members of one race. Members. Right? Now, they probably mean all of them. But it's unclear. It's ambiguous. Okay. Do you mean all the members or some members? Members of one race, color, sex, or national origin are morally superior to members of another race. Maybe. I think there can be some members, some, who are morally superior to some members in another race. But aren't they so, saying that you cannot do this? You cannot teach this right, okay. in your company, which, which I already agree with on that level. Right. But now I'm attacking. all the Civil Rights Act now to I'm cover attacking, all of this? Now I'm attacking. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> but now I'm attacking each individual point All right. and saying this is why it's a bad idea okay. to be in law. All right. So I think a better sentence okay. would have been to say no person is morally superior to another by virtue of their race, color, sex, or national origin. Which okay. basically says just because you are white doesn't mean you are morally superior to me. Right. So by virtue of. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a difference. It's a, it's a difference what, in how it's change? written. What, what, is it, what is it like? Honestly, what's because what I, change? I think that the ambiguity of sentence one okay. can be read and understood as some members are morally superior of this group than another group. Well, that's true. There are. There are some, okay, so there are some people there, who are yes. morally superior. Mm -hmm. We have some white people who are in jail for some heinous crimes. Yep. We have black people who are not. We have black people who go, that's horrible. What are you doing? The black people who are not you? in jail for uh -huh. those horrible crimes right? are morally superior than the white guys who are in jail. Okay. So my my issue here is a little on the pedantic side, but because we're dealing with law, that that kind of matters. Okay. And so I think that it's poorly written. So this is the problem that I have. Okay. With. Now let's just say it stopped there. Right. Okay. And you had to vote on this. Would you strike this down based on just that? No, I'd strike it down on. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I know. But but, but is that, that enough for you to go? On that, yes. Okay. Because I think it's ambiguous and I think it leaves, I, I think what it does is if somebody was training, um, let me put it in a real world situation. If I'm training, I have a, I have a business and you want to be a part of my business. Okay. And um, I might say, Tub, just because... You know, I might I might say, Tub, you have to go through this training. And this training says that there are some white people who are bad characters and they do things that are racist. And you might go, yeah, but okay, I... but the law says you can't say that. And so then you might hold me accountable under this law because you might say, well, this is ambiguous. And I read it as saying some members, not it doesn't have to be all it doesn't members. doesn't have to be all of them. Because right? it, stip it doesn't stipulate whether it's all or some. Okay. It just says members of one race, you know. All of them, some of them. So you could read it more ambiguously and say, well, DL is in violation of number one, even though what he said might actually be true. Right. 
Okay. So this is my problem. The wording here can get somebody into real actual trouble. Okay. You know, because they could say something and be like, eh, there are some white so, guys. Yes, there are, but you're not allowed to say that. So here you're not against the concept. You're against the, the, the initial wording. wording of the, it. Okay. the initial wording. All right. What it should say, in my opinion, is something more close to you said this. no person is morally superior by virtue See, of. I, I'm paying right? attention to you. You already said this. Okay. okay. So then we move on to number two. Okay. Right. So now we move on. So did this, you do the, just the next line? Yeah. So. Oh, well, we're going to be here all day. No, 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 no. I don't, no, I think we're going to go quick. You understand that I have mine saved at line 181. <laughs> all right. I'll be quick. I'll no, be very quick. It's your fault. Hey, mine is just complaints. So, so you're good. This is good. This is good. It's all, it was all good. So in this next line, it says an individual by virtue of his or her race, color, sex, or national origin is inherently racist, sexist, or oppressive, whether consciously or unconsciously. I actually don't agree with. I, I mean, I don't disagree with that line. Okay, I was just say that I, one almost kind of goes worked. better with your first one because yeah, and that's kind of where I got that. I was like, hey, wait a minute, the first one doesn't say by virtue of, uh -huh. you know, and it's not, it's not that it has to say by virtue of, but what this is saying is, be, just because you're white doesn't mean this is true, right? Right, which is way the way the first one I think should be worded and okay. very very much clarified. So no disagreement here. So one, I'm okay with. Uh, I'm sorry, one I disagree with. Two, two. I'm okay with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we move on to three. Number three, it says an in, oh, Whoa. It says an individual's moral character, um, an individual's moral character or status as either privileged or oppressed is necessarily determined by his or her race, color, sex, or national origin. What do you think? Okay, an individual's moral character or status as either privileged or oppressed is necessary. Or oppressed is necessarily. Oh, so uh, I gotta keep in mind. They're telling you you can't. I gotta keep putting right. that in my mind. You're telling me right. you, you can't do this. This is okay? considered discrimination. Yeah. All right. So holding to what they're holding in the whole thing. Okay, I'm kind of okay with this. Okay. All right. I'm An individual's more character. Okay. How's it different than what they're saying in the preceding? So it fails, in my opinion. Uh huh. On, on Are the, we gonna argue over words? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. It fails on privileged or oppressed. Here's why. Because it doesn't, does it, it doesn't constitute, it doesn't, it doesn't think about like time and circumstance. Okay? But, he's, oh, but do you think that's intentional? That th there's a level of Maybe. broadness so that we kind of go, no, this is in this area also. Right. Because if you say specifically, now it right. can only be right. this. Because in the 1800s, uh -huh. a black person was oppressed, whereas a white person was not. Right. And, you know, so, so like this line here. It would have been absolutely, it wouldn't have made any sense at all in the 1800s. Now, what happens in the year 3000 if we come to a different understanding of things and we say, yeah, back in 2022, this group of people were actually oppressed, whoever it was, right? right? So what we're doing is we're making something illegal um, based on this, all that this really amounts to. And maybe we'll just go to number four and we'll stop, okay? Because I don't want I don't want it to sound boring. Because you know it sounded better in my head when I was doing. It. I was like, oh man, <laughs> you know, like wow, you know, maybe I need to work out how to say it so it doesn't sound as boring. But the idea here is that that these words matter, okay? And that when you put them into law, then what happens is you can get good people into trouble. Or what you can do is you can you can make ideas be um, you legislate that certain ideas are bad, when maybe. The uh, when maybe some of the ideas that would uh, you make some ideas bad because you put them under a umbrella that they shouldn't have been. Okay. So in this particular case, if somebody, if I were to say, "Hey, I want you to, I want some training for you," that says black folk were oppressed back in the eighteen hundreds, and they were oppressed for a very long time, and this now still lingers on in, at some level. We can argue about what level it lingers right. on and the effect of it, mm -hmm. but it still lingers, right? And so therefore, because it still lingers, there is still some level of oppression, which is the argument that people make, mm -hmm. right? Now, I'm not so big on that argument, right. but I don't think that you should be uh, uh, not permitted to talk about it in your business if you want and say like, hey, I want this level of understanding but in my saying, business. I, I don't, I, I don't look at that and go saying they're saying you can't talk about it. Oh yeah, I think, but I, but no, well, not talk about it. No, they're okay. saying they're saying that you cannot teach in such a way. You can't that teach this it. has to be right. You, you can't require this level of knowledge for employment or membership, um, certificate, certification, licensing, credentialing, or passing an examination or training. Right. They, they, so yeah. basically, Coca Cola can't come in and say, "Look, we believe that you know several hundred years of slavery has uh, is still lingers today." 
And this is what we, how we would like as a company to address the issue today, because we believe that these, that there are still issues that are present. Mm -hmm. And we believe that we have an opportunity to make an improvement in the lives of people in this way, based on this knowledge. And what this bill says is, nope, you can't do that. That's illegal. And I have a problem with it. One, because it's a private business and the private business right. should be no, able to. No, hold on. What I'm saying that when you said they can't talk, I'm like, no, no, I don't think that's what they're saying. I don't think this is saying that they can't talk. I think they that, can talk. It's that, just, this is not that they can't the require. basis of right. employment. And, 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 yes. and I have, and I do have yep. a problem with that because of a couple of things. So do you, do you think they should? Take the opposite side of this. Do I you don't think that they, they I don't be? think it's a I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. Um, because I disagree with some of these ideas. I'm not defending these ideas like I say that yes, you know, like what I just said. I'm not necessarily making the argument for them. I'm just saying I understand that's a argument that has been made, and that if it's Coca Cola, mm -hmm. that they have the right to say, Hey, if you want to work here, you at least have to take this training. And then you have to pass a test that says you understand this stuff. And then you have to acknowledge that, yes, going forward, these are the things that I'm going to I do mean, in this company. In this company. There's two things. With right? that. One is we have the libertarian think that says, I don't have to like right. what you're doing to defend your right to do it, right. which I can't put there. But in, in reality, we already have a level of this. There have been jobs where we've had to go do some OSHA videos. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you have to understand this or you can't go back on the floor or you can't do this. Right. It's, it's already there. Right. Those things are already right. there. Yeah, so they we have rid of those too. Like, right. Yeah, so, so we have that. Okay. And so what I was thinking to do, and, and it seems a little bit more dry than I was thinking this morning at 5 a.m. when I was doing <laughs> this. Um, but what I was thinking to do is just like walk through and just say, hey, let's talk about each one of these. Because what I, re what I really want to address, going back a few moments ago when okay. I said, let's talk about a bill and let's segue. And we're going to talk about why a bill isn't necessarily the right answer for right. parents. Because people aren't reading these bills. I have already, in just the first three, made an argument why we probably, even if we, ex you know, even if we accept this notion that the government should be able to say that this kind of behavior, uh, or this, you know, these kind mm -hmm. of things are considered discrimination, and if it's discrimination, then you can't, you you can't engage with your employees at, at this particular level. Right. Even if we agree that it's okay for the government to do that, which I don't. There are still problems with what the government has listed here, right? And that's why it's important to read these bills. That's why it's important to be engaged in your child's education more than just saying, hey, let's elect somebody to go and take care of it for us. Hey, he said no CRT. Great. He's going to take care of it. Because guess what? This is Florida. Ron DeSantis has basically said the same thing. Yep. He's like, hey, no CRT on our schools. And even though... I don't like the idea of CRT from what I understand right. of it. Um, I, I think there are still problems with what they're trying to put into law here. I think there are problems with these bullet points. And I think that they're that that they also what ultimately what they do, knowledge is to be continually challenged. Always. And what they do is they say, This bit of knowledge you can't this challenge. Stays. It. We don't so yeah, we don't we, change this, we don't look into if, it. This if, we're if here, we, we settled this. If we can't challenge it, we can't when you can't challenge an idea, you can't get to a better idea. Right. And we need to be able to get to a better idea. And so right here, this is just saying like Coca-Cola, probably more like Disney and other companies that are you know really huge. You can't teach this stuff. You can't teach white privilege. And I, I you know, I, I think that they should be allowed to. But even if even if we say, even if we agree that they shouldn't be allowed right. to, what they've written here is garbage because it allows the opportunity for it opens up the door for people to take them to court, drag it all the way up to the Supreme Court, figure out what do we mean by members of one race? Did we mean all of them or do we mean some of them? Right. That's a big does, deal. Members plural mean more than one person has to be living. Can one right. person be enough to say right. that this is right? You know, yeah. I, I would say like, that probably two people would be members. Mm -hmm. But what if you have 100 people? Does it have to be all 100 or can it be two? Can it, how much, you know, can it be anywhere in between? I read this as any number under uh, all of them or, you know, from two to all of them. Mm -hmm. Somebody else might say, nope, it has to only be all of them. That's not, that's not very clear here, right? And so when I look at it, that first sentence is incorrect because if you read it as some members, right. yes, some members of any group are better than some members of another group. Yep. Just depends on which one. Which, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. There are some black people, and, and I don't mean only some, but there are some black people that are better than some white people. 
Why? Because some white people are in jail for doing terrible things. Mm -hmm. And they're morally inferior. Maybe, you know, like they can change, but presently. Right, right. <laughs> right. So this is the problem with the bill. This is why I think that it's a good set. It was a good segue to come over. And maybe I didn't deliver it quite as, again, I well, apologize, people. You, Tub, you, I'm reading the room here. Tub's like, Ooh. you know, well, you know where the segue right. is because it's like eating a saltine cracker. Here's, oh, I like, I like, all right. So he, here's, here's the thing. When you were talking segue from what we were talking about to this bill, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, yeah. But we focus on two different parts. That's why. Right. I went way down it. Mm -hmm. I went way Let's down. Over. Okay. I'm like. Because I made my point. We don't have to go through the other five points. Do you have five more? No. no yeah. There's eight. There's eight bullets. We're Are they all based on verbiage? No. Uh, not necessarily, but kind of. But okay. we don't have to. I've made my point. Numbers one through three, there's room to argue with them. So clearly, if I can't even get past the first three, we don't have to worry about all eight. Right. Okay. okay. And, and so, so let's go where you're going. That right there, because here's the problem. This is what I was saying. It seems like the summary stuff, you start reading to it, it doesn't seem to hit a lot of stuff that's in the bill. Because as you get down into the 160s, 170s, all the way down to the twos, um, it's explaining curriculum in schools. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Oh, there's our segue because you were focused on the first part of, yep. which is kind of what you're, what they're talking about is corporate training. And right. this is more of like right. well, academic training. Right. And, and, and what I, no, we're You're good. Right. I didn't make that distinction, and I do, and I, and I so, apologize. So for that. I'm going to say, I'm going to save the show. So, I'm going to so save the episode. He's going to save the show. Save the episode right going to get us back, and it's going to be less boring. No, no. So if you haven't tuned out, hold, hold don't on. yet. I said I was going to make it less boring. Tubbs got this. I'm just going to hold on. You threw in less boring. I did not say that. I'm excited already. Okay. All right. You ought not to be. All right. So here's what happened. So now it starts laying out these guidelines, telling them what they have to cover. Right. What they have to teach inside of the schools. Right. Okay, so as I got down, you know, I kind of went through this. I started getting questionable about 167. Okay. And actually, so, and, and even before that, if you go to 163, the second week in November shall be designated as the Holocaust Education Week. So now they're even saying, okay, here's when you're doing it. Here's right. how you're doing it. Now, right. stay now with, you know this is already in place. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I don't so like, this is not like a new. No, because we come down, we get into colored stuff. Right. That's how I, that's how I gauge it. Colored, as in green and red and stuff like that. Uh, those are still colors. You can say whatever you want. That's still colors. So inside of this, White they have this here, canceled. and this is part of this is this did this did look I mean, look I on mine. See, see, yours is not mine. Is I coding. only see in black and white. Of course. Oh, that's worse, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this show you is so getting canceled. canceled. All right. Oh my god. So after terrible. they talk about the idea of you know this is when we do Holocaust. Um, then it was the history of uh, African Americans, including the history of African peoples, and they go through that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Uh, 174 is the elementary principles of edge of agriculture. Right. Okay. Yeah, one uh, 175, one the true effects of all alcoholic and intoxicating liquors and beverages and narcotics upon the human body and mind. Well, I get right there on that one. Libertarians are going to be like, what? Right. Okay. Now moving down now, cause let me be honest with you. Some things I'm looking at, I'm going, forget about libertarian. Like I'm just saying, let's think of, let's think of this is what our kids are going to learn. Right. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. My boys, middle of Jacksonville, agriculture, not a concern. Right. We're going to be honest. Okay. Yeah. And now the amount of people who actually run farms and stuff, it's even less. Okay. So kindness to animals. So you don't want kids learning to be kind to animals? What's kind? You want to talk about how they leave things too vague. What's kind? What happens when they start saying you can't eat animals? Right. Because that's unkind. Right. You know, these houses, you know, uh, beef houses, what I call, you know, for slaughterhouses. Right. That's unkind. You can't I mean, do that. Your version of what it means to be kind to animals and what PETA would say, drastically that's what I'm different. So I'm with you in arguing words because that's I kind mean, of what this is doing. What's what's well, this one here is just saying kind of animals. It's too vague. And what what right. what freedoms can they take? Because now they're going to start teaching right. every kid you have to be a vegetarian. Right. I mean, I mean, there are some things that most people would agree on. Like, hey, you shouldn't throw rocks at the neighbor's yes, cat. Yes, most definitely. Right. Like, but hold like, on. Oh, like that, most people would, would agree. On. Is that the school's job? That's right. a parent's job. Right. That's par right. Stop trying to take away parents right. out of the equation. The school is not there to yeah. give parents to kids. You know what? Here's an idea. Parents be parents. Tell your kids, don't kick puppies on the way to school. Right. Stay focused. Keep, right. Get your tail there. Okay. So mm -hmm. the history of the state. You can get a little questionable in that. Like, okay. I mean, if we're talking about like, hey, we already have compulsory education. Should the state mandate for public schools to teach about the history of the state? 
in that particular case, I don't I, have a I'm big issue. It. I'm not against it, but uh, okay. But here's the thing: factor that in with the other previous things. Right. What do they focus on? <clears throat> right. And, and I'm going to get to that here in a minute. I'm going to get to this. All kind of right. comes together for well, in my mind, it comes together. Probably better in mine. Yeah, uh, I can't we really promise that. Um, the conservation of natural resources that's in 180. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's determining that? Because couldn't that now say we should all have electric vehicles and stuff right. along those lines? So there's still, it's funny because here's the thing. These were put in by Republicans. Right. And I look at this and I go, wait a minute. That's kind of appeasing both sides right there. Right. You know, they're like, oh, we're going to put it in there where they have to take good care. Oh, good. That means you're going to tell everybody this is what they have to drive from now mm -hmm. on. And you start, where do they want to indoctrinate you? Right. When you're young. Right. So they so they might have lost us to that argument. Right. But then they, if they can get these ones. Right. So what you're saying is the Republicans put these in. Yep. So the Republicans said the conservation of natural resources, yep. which in general is a good idea. Most people, but we would don't agree know where that. it's going to. But what does it mean? And yep. then if the the if, if the Republicans who are saying that the education system is more liberal, right? Then what that means is they just basically gave them a green light to teach what they believe yep. the conservation of natural resources they didn't leave is, it out. not what the Republicans believe exactly necessarily. So, but because hold on, again, goes, this is the they, libertarian argument. They're right. the same. They're right. the same. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. Parts right. are the same. Right. Okay, so they're like, hey, no, we, we're going to put this in. They're complimentary. Yes. I think it's probably a better term. Yep. They're complimentary. Yep. I mean, because, yeah, they differ on what means to be conservation. But they left it open. Hey, teachers. But you they, want, they were like, we're okay. Ultimately, hey, we'll we don't put it care. in there. And then, you know, you'll figure it out probably. Um, okay. In 181. Mm -hmm. And I and I see they're showing. Oh, I, I see why they struck it. Because they're pulling stuff out in there. Having well, they're, read they're, they're reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Comprehensive, age-appropriate, and developmentally- appropriate K through 12 instruction. And they're going to lay, start laying out some stuff um, like concepts of community health, consumer health, um, environmental health, family life, including. Okay. So now here's the problem. Anytime they start putting in there age appropriate. Right. Who's determining age appropriate? Because there are some things that they're talking about doing in schools now that I right. go, whoa, right. there's no reason kids that young should be hearing this stuff. Sure. So who's determined? Because their standards have deemed, oh, this is appropriate for this. Right. This five-year-old can read this book. So now I'm looking at it. I'm going, okay, what's age appropriate? Who's determining that? The same people who are already telling us this is fine right. at this age. Because right. they didn't say, here's the right. guy. Or it doesn't even say you can't talk about these things. Right. Age appropriate. Yeah. Okay, so now I think it's okay for kids to hear about um, homosexuality, mm -hmm. transgender in the first grade. Right. That should not be their concern. No, right. not, do I, am I saying they should never learn about it? No, they're going to learn about that anyway. Right. But is it the school's responsibility to start? No, it right. is not. The, you are there to teach them the basics, which they're failing, which we already covered. They're failing miserably right. at. Okay. So why are you going to jump into areas you have no say? Okay. Uh, injury prevention and safety. That goes a whole nother way. Uh, internet safety, nutrition, personal health. I mean, nutrition from the government, you know, the same entity that told us that fat was bad for 40 years. And then they came back and said, you know, it turns out actually um, hold, hold, hold not on. so bad. Do we have to go that far? Can we not just look at everything we've been going through the past year and a half? Right. And they've determined, no, this is the best health for you. And then right. and now they're going, oh, yeah, never mind. That wasn't the best. Right. Never, never mind. Our bad. Yeah. And, and so, OK, so I, I'm not going to. Well, I, I'm trying to see how many of these I actually want to cover because they're, they all follow the same premise. Right. They all follow the same idea of. Who is the school right. to be doing? Now, here's the other argument I would make through all of Substance use this. and abuse. That's a very interesting one because we've been told for years that if you smoke marijuana on a regular basis, you're abusing drugs. And right. And I'm what like, do we know now? not really. No. You know. And now we're now we're finding out like, oh, it turns out marijuana might even have some uh, proactive uh, 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 protective benefits against COVID. L let right? me ask like, you. Like like that literally yes. came out of study. L let me ask you a question. You know? So imagine. Your seven-year-old son. Say Zach's in public school. So right. I hope that never happens. I hope. Are we, do we ever mention his name on here? It's fine. Okay. All right. So imagine- I mean, I got this picture on my- uh, That's true. Okay. So imagine your son is seven years old in the second grade, and they start saying, hey, you know, marijuana use is bad, and it's going to do this. And then they go, hey, you know, I've seen my dad do that. Right. Well, when do they come knocking on the doors? Right. When do they start oh, saying, that's oh- happened. That There's abuse happened. here. And so now you shouldn't have your kids because this. I think I've read stories where that has absolutely happened and the child has been pulled out. And it is a conversation that maybe we'll get into one day. But from my understanding, um, CPS is dangerous. Okay. Because they go way overboard very quickly. Mm. At any rate, 
So different conversation for no, another you're day. good. So 195, you see, they, they got rid of the health education curriculum, but for students in grades seven through 12, mm -hmm. teen dating, violence and abuse, this component must include, and they start giving definitions of it here. And, and now let me be honest with you. Some of these things, if we're going, I am an advocate and I understand the kids talk sometimes. Kids say right. mean things. Some it's just the reality. Like you are, you cannot control what every right. teenager is going to say. Right. Okay. And they're kind of getting into there a little bit. More importantly, here's the problem. That's not up to the school to teach these kids. Right. What happened to these? Are the things that we teach our kids. Right. That's not it. You know what that's. You know what that is. Parents. Right. That's parents raising up their right. kids. Um. So. Well, I, you know, I, I think this is very interesting because. Yeah. It says the warning signs of dating violence and abusive behavior. Then it says the characteristics of healthy relationships. And who determines those? Who determines it? And I don't think that everybody's in an agreement on these things, right? I mean, some things we are. Because right, like, there you know, are things inside your relationship that I, as a Christian man, and inside your relationship, I go, those are good. No. Really? Are they, dude, yeah, for real. No, no, you don't say that. Yeah. I mean, we'll, off. We'll talk about this off. Oh, no, man, but, but what crazy. I'm saying though is, remember, it's that higher standard again. Right. Who has the moral higher standard? Well, I do, of course. This guy here. So, this but guy. what I'm getting at is, depending on who's going to interpret right. this, I may look at this and go, hmm, yeah, that, that's not good. You ought not be doing that. That's not right. good for a good relationship. Right. Where, okay, I'll give you an example. So, my extreme is I don't have private conversations with women. Right. I think it's a good thing to do. It keeps me out of trouble. I think that's good. I think every man, every married man should do that. I can't force every married man. Right. It's good for me. I would suggest that you could. So I could then make the argument says, this is the best way to handle it. You don't do that, DL. Right. Everybody so welcome way, Mike Pence. Here I am. And, and so here you, dude, that's just wrong. Like, why would you do that? Like, why? I owed you one for a comment a moment ago. You were the one playing trombone with kids, all right? I simply stated the truth, a fact that you brought out here. I repeated what you said. I did not name call you. I almost said it word for word, okay? And then you're trying I was to trying to show out. people what a healthy relationship was not and how and here to be it abusive is. behavior. And here it is, right? So I'm using the abusive one in this, words, in this relationship. Well, I was using words which are basically violence. So Exactly. So now you see what's happened right. here. So mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen. So along with this, let me tell you something. It kind of fits in here because as we talked a number of lines back, teach sister on this time, teach sister on this time, teach mm -hmm. this. I've always had a problem with this. Right. Period. And not just like, oh, because I'm this guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I've never liked the idea. It, it, all right, I'm going to say this the way that I think it, and just give me a second. Sure. I've never liked the idea of Black History Month. Okay. Let me tell you why. Not because I'm against it. I don't think that history should be different. I, I, I think that it should be taught with all of it. I, I, I think there should be, hey, listen, if, if this Black man did this, mention it in September. Right. Like, why can't why can't history right. flow as history? Right. This is I don't care what color you are. If you did something great during this time, I don't want right. to wait till February to hear about it. Right. We do Tell it all me now. Yeah, we do it for like everything else. Exactly. Right? So I'm like, you know what? Incorporate this stuff. Right. Let it because now we're separate. Oh, this is important this month. No, no, no. What they did was just as important in September for us to learn about. I, I don't have to wait till then to be like, oh, look at all the great things that black people did. No. Great people, right. black people did great things. We should be hearing about throughout the year. Right. If there and, was a if there was a significant event that occurred on April thirteenth. Yep. Then April thirteenth is a good day to talk about it. Hey, because we do that for everything else. We're yes. Like, hey, today in history. But right, yeah, right. Like in but, today's but, history, but on this only, day, a hundred years ago, but this say happened. That this is we're going to focus here. No, no. Right. Here's the idea. Now we've started putting in kids' minds. Well, white history and black history are different. Right. No, they're not. They're not different. Right. They did. History is history. Right. The events may be different. It's human history. Yes. And that they all, it's not like black history had a whole different time in the 1700s than the white people. No, no, no. It was still happening in the right. 1700s. And I think we get a better education if we start going, hey, while well, this was happening, this was happening. Right. But you can align these things better chronologically because that's what history is. Right. It's chrono chronologically written, supposed right. to be. So you say, here's what's happening. So now when you, you have this, oh, well, it's white history time. Okay, we're, we're focusing right. on this. Well, that's the that's a perception, even if that's not necessarily yeah. how it plays out. And so I'm like, right? why can't we just, we just put a lot of together? focus yep. on Black History Month? And so then it's like, it, you know, people focus on remembering the things that Black Americans have done In or Black folk have done mm -hmm. before they were, you know, freed yeah. and were yep. technically Americans, I guess. You know, but we, we don't, it, it's almost like, oh, now is the month to talk about it. No, right. Any month. Any month. month and, any day. And the problem day is about it. They've, they've put this in the law now. They right. say, hey, during this time, talk right. about this. During this time, talk about this. Right. 
No, if it's history, you talk right. about it when it happened. And if you're talking about white history during this time, okay, right. here's what was happening. Because I think that we ought to get away from the fact that it's white history or black history. It's just history. Right. And we don't have to, now keep in mind, I was going to agree with it. Right. We don't have to, like, oh, we, we have things that we've done that we are not proud of. Right. Okay. Let me make this very clear. People nowadays still have things that they've done in the past that they are not proud of. Right. You have things in your own life. So I always like, oh, that's things. Were not, okay. I don't get to wipe out part of my life because I didn't like what I did during that time. It's right. still there. We well, use this to kind of go, that was a bad time. Should do that. Yeah. Okay. So all I'm saying is when they started putting all this division in there, I'm like, they're just adding to the problem. Right. Why don't we come to a point where we go, I'm not going to tell you only do this during this time. Right. Here, teach this. Get, right. get this along those times. Right. Well, you know, and as we've pointed out here, a lot of the problems, a lot of things that we're looking at here, and I don't know if you wanted to specify anything else, but as we mm -hmm. continue to go down, you can this see it's got, the same premise. You got like life skills that build confidence. What does it mean to build confidence? Yep. Support mental and emotional health. How do you do that? Enable students to overcome challenges. Shouldn't they be doing that anyway? You, know, you need like, a law about that. Right, <laughs> right. And, and, and so we're, we're, we're putting all these things into law. And then, But the problem is we started out, like in this particular case, in this moment in mm -hmm. time, we started out saying, we have a problem with this CRT. We need to do something about it. And instead of saying, I'm going to get involved in my child's education and make sure that I'm mm -hmm. seeing the material that they're reading and that they're in, 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 you know, maybe step in the class from time to time. Yes. Instead of Take doing that. Day. Yeah. Instead of doing that, we push off the responsibility onto a lawmaker to do something yep. about it. Then what they in turn do is they put out a law like this that's basically vague and leaves it open these things to happen yeah, nothing anyway. Was nothing was settled in this. Right? Like, there, like even though uh, even though this bill is technically, I mean, even they're not saying it, but it's technically against, uh, you know, the CRT ideas that people are opposing, even though that's basically what this is, it still leaves it open for debate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really close the issues, which is what I was really trying to get at right. up front, is to say, like, look, see how you can read it this way and then how you can read it this way. And I, that's probably how I should have approached it a little bit better. And so that you can see like, oh, there's room for argument here, depending on who we're talking about. Just like you said a moment ago, you were like, in my household, we have these certain moral beliefs. Mm -hmm. A good example of that might be some families are, are like, we're polyamorous. Okay. So we believe in having, you know, multiple and, people involved in our marriage. Mm -hmm. You would find that morally offensive. Yes. Yep. And you would say, no, this does not make for a good family. And I find that to be immoral. And then we've got the words in here. I yep. believe we saw the words moral. I can't remember where they were yeah. now. Um, but we saw the words moral in here. Yep. I'm pretty sure I could look it up, but I'm, uh, for whatever reason, I'm drawing. I'm, you I'm keep going all the court. It. But, but we've basically seen whether, even if the word itself, moral, isn't in here, it's still a kindness to animals. That is a moral proposition. Because what does it mean to be kind to animals? Does it mean not to eat them or simply not to kick the puppies on the way to on the way to school? So, uh -huh. Right? Some things, and, and I think people feel like, well, we intuitively know what this means, but then somebody comes along and says, huh, well, it somebody means, like us, a little it more means, difficult. It little... means something different to me. So while the greater majority of the population might have said, well, yeah, kindness to animals means don't kick the neighbor lady's, the, the, the neighbor's cat. Like, stop throwing rocks at it, which is something that boys do. Yeah. Right? And so most of us in the community might say that's what it means. But then somebody might come along and say, you know, I don't think it's really kind to animals to eat them because you have yep. to kill them. And you have to raise them. And we're raising them in an environment that is not their natural habitat. So I think that's unkind to animals. And so this is what we mean when we're getting into the bill and we're reading and we're saying, this is still not a good bill. Even if, if you feel like it's addressing CRT in the workplace and in schools, it's really leaving the door open for the educators who are just going to finagle and find a way yep. around it anyway. Because at the end of the day, you can't write a bill that includes everything. It, it, here's the thing is, if you're going to pass a law, make something happen. Right. Like, let it be a law that something happens. Something starts, something ends. It's very, this is it. Right. That's not this. Right. This is vague. This is a, we're going to put stuff into action that nobody can really describe. What's right. the point? Like, to right. me, what's the point? Right. Uh, be very clear that if we make this law, this has to stop. Yep. 
And, and, then, and, and so that's the problem here. And that's the problem with the bill. That's the problem with the education system is that we're constantly pointing the finger at somebody else and say, you take care of it. And then we squabble when eh, something comes about and we're like, we don't like that element. No, we need to be involved. I mean, let's be honest. It's your kid. It's your kid. And people, parents generally look at it and say, it's my child. I'll make the decisions. How are you going to make decisions if you're not involved? My mom was involved in my education. Come home, like you were saying, what'd you learn today? And like, she didn't give me any crazy answers to go back to school with, but she was like, what'd you learn today? All right, one time. Well, I said it off, but you did let, it one time. Let me see your homework. Mm -hmm. And yep. when I wasn't doing, let me see your report card. And then when my report kind of came back and I had like C's all over the place or D's and worse, you know, then she would be up at the school and be like, what's going on? Why is that? You know, why is my child getting a D? He's not turning in his homework. Oh, he's oh, not. Okay. okay. I'm going to go back to the source of this problem. And then, you know, and then she would come back to me yep. and be like, you know, you need to do your homework. And then she would go to the teachers. And unlike parents today, my mama was different. My mama would go and say, oh, is he fail? Is he not doing well? Yes. Fail him. Yep. And they're like, Let we can't do They told her. Yeah. We can't do that. And she's like, how is he going to learn if you don't fail him? Give him a reason to feel yeah, like let me tell you, he needs to do that better. That does not happen anymore. Now they truly would come in and I would have to explain to them. It's my fault that their kid failed, which, okay, let me be honest with you. Now, if it's, I'm not giving the curriculum, if I'm not teaching them what they ought to be learning right. so that they can do these things. But when it's, when it's not, when it's just your kid isn't doing any work, Right. It's it's not on sure. the teacher. Anymore. I always do it more now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like but what I'm getting at is because remember there are bad teachers. I'm, I would right. make it sound like it's oh the parents' fault. No, no, right. there are no. bad teachers. Right. Okay. But there's a difference between, hey, you know what? I'm relaying information to them and your student isn't getting it. They're struggling right. with it. Okay, that's one thing. Yeah. But when it's um I'm giving them the thing, I'm giving them everything they need, they're not doing homework, they're not doing right. classwork. That's your kid's problem. Right. It's time for you to get involved and drag that right. kid back home and yep. you figure it out there. Everybody needs to play their role. Mm -hmm. And everybody needs to play more of a role. Role than they are playing parents need to be more involved they cannot be involved only enough to get somebody elected teachers have to be more involved and they have to be more involved than just to say oh look at all these kids that that graduated and you know they're going on to college like i did that yeah and the ones that didn't go to college nope. because they couldn't not, not because they chose other, something right. otherwise but because they could not right i dated a girl i called her a public high school push through because she had the reading um, skill of like a middle schooler, the reading and writing skill of a mm -hmm. middle. She, now, when you talk to her, you didn't really get this right. impression of like, wow, you're not very smart. So speaking wise and just having a regular conversation, everything seemed fine. But then when you would see like the writing and the way that she mm -hmm. would construct sentences, you were like, this does, is not something I would expect out of somebody who graduated high school. And she was struggling when she was in college, right? And I remember her telling me like, hey, you know, my mama, you know, like, like I cried, you know, because my mom couldn't help me and stuff like that. Right. Too. She was, she had problems at home, you know, but the school pushed her on through and they, and they a, didn't do anything to say, that's a huge stop. disservice to them. Yes. Like, I, it's like, it's almost like they don't care what right. it's doing to these kids right. long term. You know why? Bad teachers. And let's just be honest with you. It's a job. Yeah. And to them, hey, you know what I want to do? I'm going to go in at eight o'clock. I'm going to leave at four. Right. Best of luck to you. We'll and there's this no out. real accountability because mm -hmm. like we said earlier, there's no money behind it. Right. Because people will get mad at a $3 cheeseburger that's got a pickle on it when they didn't order it, when they ordered it. I shouldn't have will. They don't put right? a pickle on They will stuff. totally do that. Mm -hmm. People will totally get angry if they've given you money to educate their child and their child cannot read. Right. Yes. They will get upset at you. And if you turn around and say, we have a particular set of standards, we are not allowing your child to be here any longer because your child is not meeting these standards. Mm -hmm. Then you, you, what you're basically doing in this scenario is you are, I think the way to say it is pushing the proper incentives to everybody involved. The money gives the incentive to the school. Right. The school, by setting standards, gives incentive to the parents. Mm -hmm. Right. So everybody's got an incentive to be involved. The money is a, an incentive to the parents because no parent wants to hand over five hundred dollars. Like when you start be. teaching them, it's their money. Right. Mm -hmm. When you start doing that, this is why I would argue that the public education system simply needs to go. Because I don't think it's fixable. OK. I think that we should, and, and what I mean by public schools, I mean a school that is paid for and completely run by the government. Right. Now, ultimately, if we wanted to talk about like an anarchy society, where that's a different story. But I think the next transition but, would be a voucher system where you say, 
here's your money. You find a school that's going to accept it and your child. And then you put them, you and, put and them he, there. And here's why I think that I want to add to when you say we're against the public school system. I, I think that maybe this sounds a little too political, but it, the idea behind it is, I'm going to tell you what right now, I know some really good teachers. Like I know some, oh, yeah. like I know some really good yes. teachers, even inside the public school system. Okay, they're great teachers. Yep. They care about their kids. They want their kids to learn. But here's what I truly believe. You implement a system that vouchers or to get rid of the public school system, those teachers, they'll find a job. Like, right. like those, like, I, I want to make that very clear because I, I, I don't want like public school teachers to go, they hate us. They're just trying to get to have a job. No, no. I believe the good teachers, they're going to do just oh, fine. Yes. They will absolutely. do just fine because there, there's going to be another school that goes, we want that one. Right. We want that one over here because this is, you know, and then it right. turns into, guess what? We have more students. We have a bigger base of funds. I can pay you more. Right. I can pay you more to come to right. this school. And it's no longer, well, if you're this age or, or you're this level of teaching, now you get paid this amount. No, no. Make it based on ability. Right. Let them be able to go, well, you're a better teacher. You've proven yourself over the past 20 years. I'm going to pay right. you $200 more than I pay that one because you've right. earned it. Come on in. Yep. If they can do that, everything. It's funny that we can recognize that with a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Restaurant, if they have bad service, I'm not going there anymore. I'm not putting right. my money in there the anymore. Baby out with the bathwater. The entire thing gets tossed out. And we, I was getting ready to say that, like Go we ahead. do it everywhere else. Just, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. No, no, you're, no, you're, you're, you are taking my thunder. You are not stealing. Here's my thunder. Take it. <laughs> I, I apologize. I, <laughs> no, you're I, right. It was just because I was thinking that. I was like, yes, exactly. I was getting ready to say that. You know, so and, I stole yours. You, you did. I did. You did. It was in my mind. It was there. Like, I took it. Uh, and you took it. But no, that's exactly it. And. I'm willing to bet that most teachers would probably agree mm -hmm. with the statement, a few bad apples spoils the bunch. Well, guess what? A few bad apples, teachers, spoil the bunch, or at least makes it look like it's all spoiled. Yep. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time, and I'm out.